This is the GPL Podcast, part of the Pull Tab Sports family. You're younger than my dad. Oh. My dad's 50, my dad's 56. You're younger than my dad. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Wow. We just got finished. (laughs) That sounds kind of weird. Kind of sounds weird. Not like 99 (laughs) Disney Lions. And, And Eric, on the flip side, I bet you you just love those defensive games. I mean, yeah, if, if I'm playing, why well, I was I was the same as you, Drew. If I fell asleep on Saturday, <laughs> I'm not... now here's Jupiter and Vigo. Good evening, and welcome to the GPL podcast, episode number two hundred and fifty. Vigs, we made it two hundred fifty. That's a nice number. Well done. It's all thanks to you and your organizing abilities and getting us awesome guests uh, throughout the season. It's been a fun journey. I'm glad to be part of the Pulse Tab Sports family this year. It's been real fun to be a part of it. It, it is. It has been real fun. And who else are we going to have on our 250th episode? Hmm. Pat Micheletti. Let's bring him right on in here. Pat Micheletti. Thanks for joining hey. us on this big show. Hey. Congratulations, 250. That you know, is, we could do more shows, but you know, obviously, we're a weekly incredible. show. A lot, a lot of shows have a, a lot more show, a lot of podcasts, have a lot more shows, but being weekly at 250 episodes during the season, that's, that's little. That, that's this is our 13th that's awesome. year. So. That's awesome. So Congratulations. You both should be commended. I think I've been oh, part of four or five, something like that, but always, I've, always, I've got it listed somewhere. Always happy to join and uh, very ha- honored to be part of your 250th show. And on at an earlier hour. Just well, for yeah, at, just at, for yeah at, it took a while to get us <laughs> to this. I only I only gained an hour. I was hoping for two. Yep. And, but so the next time, you know, it might even I might even hound you guys more. I was a little delayed tonight. I go to bed I a, early. I had a 5:30 ice time. Yeah. And then I had a 6:45 ice time. Yeah. And then I had to prepare, you know, the yeah, flow. Wait, hang on. Get my violin. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So I've been at the hockey rink a lot today because I was also at availability today at three o'clock. Yeah. To catch a little practice. True. Good okay. Point. So hold on, Pat. How long have your kids been out of the house? A long time. Uh, ten years. There you go. Yeah. Something my like that. kids did, well, it's my kids did my <laughs> kids did re, did they did okay, you know, uh back in the day, except for the one time my one of my daughters thought making fish. Yeah. During a podcast would be a good idea and all of a sudden the smoke detector started going off. During the live show, that's live. And but it's Dang. it's memorable. It's memorable, yeah. I'll tell you that. Well, guys, we got some hockey to talk about here. Um, Viggs split with Notre Dame. Not, not ideal. I'm not really happy with a start. It could damage them at the end of you know at the end of the year. I know Pat's got some different feelings on it, but let's yep. get your initial feelings on this past weekend against Notre Dame. I think one of the issues with this year's Gophers team is not that they're putting out inconsistent effort or they're not generating scoring chances, they're not flashing their talent. It's these lapses in concentration that yep. we're seeing from them. They're in the area, but they're not covering their check, preventing them from scoring. They are in the right spot, but they're not ready for physical contact to win a battle. Or they're possessing the puck, and they're just arriving too early to the, the play that could be a scoring chance. So that's been an issue. And when you play a team like Notre Dame and you're not sharp and you're giving away those chances, it's hard to win the game. Pat, um, I was noticing a lot when that yeah, weekend, I, especially on Friday, <laughs> one and dones was a big I, I look thing. At it, I look at it like this. Um, I'll, look, I'll go back to last year. and At, at the start of the year, you knew – 
you knew this team and you knew how they were going to play. Based on Faber, Johnson, Lacombe, their decor. And so they're not there this year. And neither is Nice, neither is Cooley. Okay, we get we we had, we get that. So for me, I'm I'm not worried about what they're doing now so much as them going through this and learning and maturing through these games. Okay. Yes, you would love to see the wins. I don't think they've played poorly. I think, as Vig said, you know, it's a lapse here and a lapse there. And what do I attribute it that that to? That's guys that are in bigger roles this year than they were a year ago when they weren't counted on to be the guys. They were the secondary guys. And now they get handed the keys. And it takes time. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you are, how talented you are. Mentally, it takes time to understand that the keys have been given to you. Now you have to drive the car and drive it well all the time. And so I think they're learning that. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think we're going to see a different team uh, play more consistently once we hit January. That would be ideal, wouldn't it, Viggs? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and just to kind of piggyback off of that, you know, I was reading this athletic article this week about the most improved prospect in every mm -hmm. NHL team's type uh, pipeline. And Ryan Johnson was one of the guys mentioned as being super surprising, being able to step right into Buffalo's lineup and play top four minutes, actually mm -hmm. top pair at times. Yeah, And I think one of the differences is those guys make the right play, take the right risk, you know, are so calm in tough situations that they're able to play at that next level because they're so consistent. Yeah. You know, Brock Faber, you know, he's not a surprise to anybody how consistent he is. He knows that if you don't make a hard pass in the NHL, there's going to be a stick in the lane. So you have to be on your game in every play. And the guys for Minnesota right now don't have that experience, don't have that scaffolding in, in place to protect them. So they're going through these growing pains of learning how dialed in you have to be in college hockey because there's so much parity. Every team's got good players who play yeah. good structure. Well, maybe except for Michigan, but everybody else plays good structure and you have to be on your game. Yep. Well, I'll, you know, I'll give you a perfect, perfect example. Ryan Chesley, I thought last year was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and why? Because he used his legs. And I mean, he can skate like the wind and he got involved in the play. And at times last year, I thought, man, he, you know, he, he's playing the best out of all of them. Uh, this year, uh, you know, not that he's played poorly. I think, I think he had a, he was, he's one of those guys I'm talking about that um, is just, you know, he's playing a lot of minutes and he's, and I think he's trying to figure out how to use those minutes. And, you know, do, do I conserve a little bit of energy? Do I slow things down a little bit? Um, do I have to, you know, be more cognizant of, uh, in, in my own end? Uh, but we're seeing glimpses now a little bit every weekend. The goalie scored against Notre Dame, you know, makes a great move. Granted, the guy didn't have a stick, but he recognized it and he beat him and he went top shelf and, you know, ignited the Gophers, right? So I think we're slowly starting to see, a, a, you know, a little bit more of that out of him and that he's starting to understand that, he can still do those things with his legs um, and still play a lot of minutes and, and, and still defend. And, you know, he, he had a, uh, a tough one on, on Friday night, but you know, you're, you're not going to be perfect out there, but, but that's just one example of, of guys I, that I think are going to grow 
um, and understand and and really be uh, pretty darn good the second half. So Viggs, split weekend. You know, uh, elsewhere, you know, we had actually Michigan State sweep uh, Wisconsin. You had Penn mm-hmm. State and Michigan split. It's 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 not too late to catch up. No. But they do have they do have some work to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. I mean, hey, look at this. You're you're a hundred percent correct. Go ahead, Viggs, but I'll let you go first. Well, I just think you look at the Big Ten. There's basically four segments of play. Mm-hmm. Minnesota has got a pretty tough segment where they play Wisconsin, Notre Dame, and Michigan. I think when you look at the end of the year, there's a good chance that those three teams are in the top half of the league. You look at the players or the teams they have coming up, Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State, those might be the bottom three teams. I mean, Michigan State's doing well right now. They're at the top, but I think they're young. And when Minnesota played them last year, they were successful, but they hadn't really been tested or or gone through any tough times yet. So I think if you take the teams they've just played the last three and the teams are going to play, I think you're going to see a difference in the Big Ten. So you're saying that this next section is pretty darn important then? It's super important. You know, you look at the Gophers, they're 13th in the pairwise right now. It starts to matter around Thanksgiving. You know, if you if you're putting yourself towards the back half of the teens, you're gonna have a hard time climbing up throughout the year. Uh, if you're at the top, you know, you're in pretty good shape. You know, you can take a few lumps along the way and still be okay. But Minnesota needs to win these games coming up. I thought their second game against Notre Dame was super important, and they answered the bell. That first 10 minutes of that game, the first three times through all four lines, they came hard, heavy. It was probably the hardest, most physical I've seen them play. Like They were ready for contact, and they were ready to win puck battles. They lost it a little bit at the end of the first, and the most important thing is they found it again in the second and then closed out the game with their skill. So, um, Pat, you're, you're less worried. Well, I, I am a little less worried because, first of all, I think the league is really, really good this year. Uh, well, uh, well call it what you want. I think one through six um, are, are, are good. I don't think Ohio State is very good, and, you know, they lost a lot of guys. I think what's going to happen is you're going to see, and we're seeing it already, Wisconsin sweeps Minnesota, Michigan State sweeps Wisconsin. I I think you're going to see teams beating up on each other all year. Um, I do agree. You know, this stretch is important. Uh, You know, I think this this weekend is is a critical weekend Um, just to, you know, get back up closer to uh, Michigan State, uh, Penn State. You know, I, I can never figure Penn State out whether they're good, bad, indifferent, um, they play a different style. I, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, but they, but you know, they, they somehow find ways to win. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, I, I don't think Ohio state is, is, uh, all that much. I think it's a down, going to be a down year, um, overall for them. So what I think is, I think a lot of these teams are going to, you know, you're going to probably see a lot of splits, um, you know, everyone's going to beat up on each other. It's going to be tight. Uh, it doesn't look good. Remember last year, remember last year, Michigan was at the bottom of the league for quite some time. Right. And then all of a sudden, do, 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 they, uh, you know, they end up winning the conference championship, finished second in the league. Um, you know, so uh, too early for me to worry, but I understand Vee's point. Viggs, um, I, I noticed you caught at the end of today's media availability. You asked uh, Bob what he was thankful for, and what he he knew and you didn't know is that he had just signed a contract extension for another two seasons, and that, that was kind of released later on today. Thoughts about the extension for Mister Mosco? Bob is one of the best coaches in college hockey. Mm-hmm. He he proves it recruiting. And he's proved it by going to -to back-to-back Frozen Fours. I know there are a lot of Gopher fans out there who want that championship. Yep. When when Bob's behind your bench, he's going to give you a chance to get one every year. 
There yep. aren't going to be long lulls where there's not going to be talent coming to Minnesota. Good players want to play for Bob because he plays a fun style of hockey. He plays aggressive. He plays with offense. He coaches the players up. He lets them develop. You know, you look at some of the young players that have come through Minnesota the last couple of years, they get top six minutes, power play minutes right away. You know, he gives them a chance. And it's not like Minnesota plays an easy schedule. They're always playing difficult teams early in the year, and he still gives them that opportunity to develop. And I think that separates him from a lot of coaches in big-time athletics. And it's a and big plus for Minnesota. Ability. He has the ability, you know, just being around the team, Less, you know, since, well, since Bob has been here and even beforehand, um, he has the ability to to um, really build a cohesive group. I mean, those guys, those guys, you know, if a guy's out of the lineup, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm out tonight, but, you know, go Gophers. Um, they're together. You know, that's a really, really tight knit group. And um, and you got it. You have to have that. And, uh, you know, somehow. You know, with with this staff too. I mean, he's got a good staff that that you know uh, uh, plays a big part in that. But but Bob does a, a really really good job at keeping these guys together and and focused. And um, you know, he 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 picks his spots when he gets mad. And and uh, it's it's not that often, you know. And uh, so he, yeah, I agree with you. He does um, does a terrific job. And congrats to Bob. Friday night, by the way, was one of those nights when Bob was really frustrated with his team. Yep. Because he had seen them all week practice to prepare for Notre Dame and then to not see them execute it on Friday night really peeved him. You know, yeah. I saw practice last week and they were practicing line change. They were practicing face-off intensity. They were practicing defensive zone switches. Those are all the things you need to do for Notre Dame. And they were doing it, and then they just had a couple lapses. Yeah. At the same time, they they came back out the next night and performed, and and that's and that's being in the big moment and understanding it, and you know you can do it in practice till you're blue in the face, right? And it's mm -hmm. you know no pressure, no nothing. And you get in the game, and you get the crowd, and you get the band, and uh, all of a sudden you freeze. And that's happened to you know it happened three times against Notre Dame on Friday, uh, and. You know, then they couldn't get one past Bischel that second period of shooting him 17 to four. And, uh, you know, they, they Bischel was, was fabulous this weekend. Well, I've got a couple topics I wanted to get into, you know, the slow starts, players, pairwise, a couple of those things. But one thing we need to do first, Vigs, is talk about one of our sponsors, Unreal. Now is, uh, they're, well, they're they're doing a cool little release of some golf stuff coming up on Friday. I did see that coming up. So they're they're doing a lot of fresh stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're a local company, Mike Lee Jordan, White Bear Lake guy, you know, one of us. And he started this company with $300 in his bank account and he's crafting stuff for the athlete and he's looking to leave a legacy. And you just look at all these cool drops he's doing with local sports teams. It's fun to see. Uh, sign up for that stuff. You get the emails. You get the text. You can get after it quick because they don't produce a ton of stuff. They they make everything kind of limited in these drops. Mm -hmm. And then they donate 10% or, or more of all their profits to the local community. So it's a cool thing. It's like our own local Under Armour uh, Nike right in our backyard. Uh, visit unreal.co. That's a co, not a com. And use the promo code PULLTAB15 for 15% off your order. Definitely use the code. It's it's it gets you that nice discount off of everything. Um, watch for some golf stuff being released on Black Friday. I noticed they had a little shooter McGavin teaser video today, Viggs. It was pretty <laughs> 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 so that was pretty cool. So that's Unreal, one of our great sponsors, but also we've got our guys Duke Cannon, who I know you love and I love for our fabulous, fabulous hair. <laughs> yeah. And many other products, but I've used the hair products. Yeah. One weapon in your hair care arsenal should be Duke Cannon. You know, you get some styly punny, you know, do the Mr. Miyagi, get it rubbed in real good and hot, and then just work it in. I, I think the wet hair is the best to work it in. You know, dry hair, you might do a little different product, but with that grooming clay styling putty, you really want to work it in there. And so, whether it's that or uh, news anchor thick hair, give you a little bit more structure to your game, some flow. Uh, go for it at DukeCannon.com. 
Target or even your local hardware store. I noticed they have some uh, soaps out and they have like a brick of coal to give to that person on your naughty list. <laughs> so if you're looking for something to, you know, give someone who hasn't, you know, treated you very well this year, you know, look for that big ass uh, bar of coal soap. I, 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 saw, I saw the sweet potato one today in one of their uh, videos online. <laughs> very original. <laughs> Looks like put little marshmallows on top. <laughs> some original advertising. They were doing a great job. So get out there and get your Duke Cannon hair stuff and all this, all the other stuff they have as well. All right, we need to bring Pat back in here. There he is. So we talked about the slow start as a team. Um, these, I think we've kind of had a slow start for somebody who we thought would be a big deal. I think Oliver Moore's been a little quiet the last three, four weeks. I think what's going on in his game is he needs to find a few more tricks to bring to the rink. You know, he's a guy who has relied on his elite world-class speed. You know, we, we, we know he is faster than McDavid was at this age. They've timed it with the laser timers. He is fast. He's explosive. But when you get to college hockey, the defensemen know that, and they're going to play that gap mm -hmm. and they're going to give you a little more space you have to figure out how to manipulate that space and manipulate the defender to create some scoring chances for yourself. And I think he's having a little bit of trouble bringing that to the ice and it's forcing him to press. You start seeing him do things with the puck as he crosses the blue line that he probably hasn't done before. Cause he's trying to figure out how can I get in the score sheet? And so it's going to be a big challenge for him to elevate his hockey IQ and figure out how to create scoring at the college level because he's shown the speed. He's shown the skill. Mm -hmm. It's just that brain has to catch up and figure out how to make it happen. What do you think, Pat? I'll yeah, more. I think I, he had a good start. I, I have, I have thoughts on, on Oliver Moore. <laughs> um, he's a freshman and every level that you go up, it, there's an adjustment period. His speed got him going early. And I think he surprised the heck of a, out of a lot of defensemen, whether you've seen him play before or not. Um, I, I think he, you know, his, his speed was electrifying, right? Still is, always will be. Um, I think you're right, Viggs, is that he's got to learn the game a little bit more. And I think, um, I think he will actually be a better player when he doesn't handle the puck as much. He, I think he really needs to use his line mates better. Let them handle the puck a little bit more. Use your asset, your speed, get behind the D. Let him, let him get, you know, yeah. let him go after pucks. Um, I think when he, you know, he, he, he's not brainy enough yet to make that Logan Cooley type play where he can hold on to it and just delay, delay, delay. Cause everything is, is, one speed for him. I would really love to see him because he can accelerate so fast. I'd like to see him slow it down, maybe go medium, maybe go fast. I'd like to see him use that maybe all in one sequence. Change it up a bit. Change your speed. Not just go speed, no, speed, speed. If you're if if I'm a defenseman and the way Oliver Moore is playing now, I know exactly how to play him. I just need to, I need to, I need to pace with him. But if he comes up and just get, you know, just gives a little hesitation, that's going to make the defenseman think. And as soon as that defenseman thinks, you know, this Viggs, because he'll stop or, or, or do something. That split second is all Oliver Moore would need to get by that D just yeah, a split he second. So, you know, that's from him on a rush. Um, when, when he's carrying it on a rush, you know, he's got to recognize, you know, how many, how many defenders are back? What am I going to do? Where are my, where are my line mates? Should I cut across the blue line? Should I try to take it deep and, 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 and know that, uh, you know, I've got a third guy coming in. It's more reading the, you know, reading the play and reacting. And if, you know, once he develops that part of his game, 
it will be um it will be scary to watch because he you know he's he's all the tools are there that makes sense i've got a, i've got a couple more because this is kind of a fun topic about yeah. player development it, and and how players get better and if you look back at Matthews Nye's time in the USHL, yeah. he really struggled at Tri City. He went through about a half of the year where he was struggling to score, he was struggling to contribute, and his game was really lost. And he had to go through that there in the USHL. And he bounced back from it and he developed and he had a super strong second half. And when he came to campus as a freshman and I saw him be able to change speeds and accelerate out of close contact, yep. you're like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen a big man at Minnesota with that kind of manipulation and able to come out of battles with pucks and create dangerous chances. And so Oliver Here's Moore has got to figure that out because he's he's probably never gone through this before. Here's what I did when when, when now, now, granted, we don't have the we didn't have the sophistication that they do now with the, with the video and all that. But that being said, I never, ever watched myself play. I always watched the players on the other team. Who are the defensemen that I were going up against that weekend? Was he a good skater? Was he, you know, did he stumble crossing over? Was he, you know, was he slow? was, you know, wh which way did he have a tough time turning over, you know, cr crossing over. And so, the, you know, wh wh where should I throw the puck in? Should I throw it in Chris Chelios's or Pat Ethier's corner, <laughs> right? You know, I knew Chelios, yeah. so you're, you're not going to be, you're not going to, he's going to win that battle. But, but there's and, someone else, right? And so, everyone listening, that sounds so simple. But some of these players, they get to the next level and they're not thinking about that because they've no. always been able to beat the player they're facing one on one with one move or one trick yep. or speed or their best attribute. It's not always about that. It's figuring out where the soft spots are. Yep. And it's a it's a leap for guys with their hockey IQ. Yeah, you had to. And, and you know, d during warmups, I, I, honestly, I, I hardly ever warmed up during warmups. I'd get on my knees and I'd watch them shoot pucks at their goalie. You know, and I'd see, okay. oh, God, he, you know what? Guys keep shooting there and they keep missing there. Keep missing. He keeps missing it. So, hmm, you know what? If I get a chance, I'm going to go lower left or upper right or wherever if I get the chance. You know, if I get an open shot on him, that's where I'm going to go. So, you know, you got to kind of, you got to think the game, you know, some, you know, a majority of it, in my opinion, with this game of hockey is how smart you are and how you can, you know, and whether, you know, how you can outsmart your opponent, your, the individual, whoever it is, the goaltender and, and, uh, and beat them. I also have a note here from UVX pairwise number 13. That's that is always a concern. No, yeah, no, no, no. Because at the end of the season, all games matter, don't they, Beeks? When they put it all together, all games do matter. Yeah. And and Minnesota's in an okay spot. They just have to capitalize in this next stretch in mm -hmm. the Big Ten here with these six games to get themselves in the top half of the league. So if that's winning four out of six points the next three weekends, that puts them in a good spot. When mm -hmm. they get into those next games with CC and Robert Morris, if they're still at this 10 to 13 spot, they cannot lose to Robert Morris. No. You know, CC you can split with because they're an NCHC. Minnesota looked, already has a winning record with the Duluth North Carolina Carolina series. Don't deserve to, to be in, in the tournament. So there. <laughs> so when you're Minnesota, though, you want to be a one seed. No doubt. So yeah. they've got some work to do to get there. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk in January. <laughs> I'm I'm Mr. Positive. You can I be know. positive. I've looked at pairwise over the last 20 years. And if you're out of the tournament at New Year's, it's hard to get into it. Oh no. If doubt. you're if you're in the top 13 at New Year's, 
you have a like a 70% chance of making the tournament. And if you're not, you better go on a heck of a run in the second half. Yeah, I don't disagree. And and, and that's kind of why <laughs> on Twitter I was giving you a hard time. Like you, you can't worried. win a chip, you can't win a championship in November, but you could certainly put yourself in a position to make it a lot more difficult. To get in the tournament. <laughs> Bob's pretty good at getting in the tournament. Yeah. Well, I well, I, I believe uh, one of the regionals is in Sioux Falls, Vicks. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if North Dakota State is good, they're going to be number one seed. They're going to be there no matter what. If Minnesota can get up to the number one seed, they could avoid the North Dakota thing, which I think they'd probably prefer to do. Maybe they want to do that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just think it's tricky. And then they get sent out east because everything seems to be out east these days. Yeah, I don't know or where. Is there, or, is it, it St. Louis? It came, Minnesota and North Dakota were is in it, the. Uh, is it at Mary's Town or something? Mary. I thought there was one maybe in, in St. Louis area this year. Was that maybe? You're just going to make it hard on us, aren't you? Yeah, I, I don't know. As he's, he's getting his Google on. I right got to look. So Maryland Heights, Missouri, Linda wins the host, Providence, Rhode Island, Sioux Falls, Springfield, Massachusetts. No Allentown. No. And host this time in Sioux Falls, it's Nebraska, Omaha. Is so it really? So I would, yeah. I would have a I would have a hard time seeing North Dakota not go there if they're a one team. True. But if Minnesota was ahead of them, so if Minnesota was like two or three and North Dakota's four, they might. Minnesota travels pretty well. Yep. They'd probably deserve the near regional. So something to fight for. So Minnesota, North Dakota, Michigan, and BU will be in the frozen four. I like that. Yeah. Whole holy blue bloods, Batman. <laughs> Certainly feels like it this year. I mean, you look at all the big name teams, they all have big recruits. COVID, they've done pretty well with the transfer portal. Uh, there are a lot of good teams in college hockey. And that's why I think you're seeing number one get there and lose. Yeah. Because they're playing good teams. Listen, like the top that, 10 is really good. I think, I, I honestly, I think you could see um, out of the top 10 teams, each of them at some point potentially being, you know, number one, number two in the country. I think it's going to, everyone's beating each other. And, yeah. and, you know, there's a lot of teams that listen. Notre Dame's a good team. They're that freshman group that they have is really good, and they've got a good goaltender. They're solid on D. They play Jeff Jackson style hockey. They're going to be awfully, awfully hard to beat. That was a tough series, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then you, you know, in, in Wisconsin, they're playing hard. I don't know how they're going to be in them in a month and a half. You know, we'll see. How they grow up. Michigan State, young, freshman goaltender. How are they going to be next month? That's why I I say, you know, I I, I get where the Gophers are now. Mm-hmm. But I also understand that there's going to be some, how did we lose that game with a lot of teams? How did we lose? How did we get swept at home to these guys? You know, when we yeah. were, you know, so um, that's why I have hope. Well, when we do, we're talking about the Mosco extension, yeah, you know, we were talking about how the young players they're not being held back and told to play safe. They're being no. told to touch the stove and get better. So the team right now <laughs> is not nearly as good as the team that's going to be out on the ice in February and March. Correct. They are going to be at a different level, mm-hmm. and that's because of the coaching and the development that this program emphasizes. Yep, it, 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 it's it's it, it's about understanding and accepting and feeling comfortable and and uh, you know I think as I said I think a lot of the guys are like, well, is he going to do it or is he going to do it? Wait, they handed the keys to me. I got to go out there, and I got to show, you know, tell the next line follow us, and then the next line's got to do it. And, you know, the Minnesota got in a rhythm last year where, boom, one line, second line, third line, and they were going. They were, you know, they'd go. And it was it was uh, a well-oiled machine. And right now I just think that, you know, that lapse may occur by one line just having a, 
a bad shift and then it then you know then it leads to being out there for two and a half minutes and allowing Notre Dame to make a line change and then score a goal you know so so it's some of that that will rectify itself in time you know especially with the attitude that these guys have and Viggs that is something you've been talking about for several years here connecting shifts Mm-hmm. When Minnesota doesn't connect shifts, the next shift, not these one and dones and everything, all of that, it makes a big difference. And that's what happened to the Nelson line with Chesley on Saturday with that two and a half oh. minute shift where they got yep. hemmed in and they just got tired and they had two chances. Yes. Where if a guy just makes a hard, heavy play, he gets out. Or there's a loose puck in the corner. Trip. There's a loose puck in the corner. Is Chesley just digs down and says, okay, 20 more seconds of effort, wins the battle, and you know, he can just chip it off the glass or send it down and get a break. And that's what Bob talked about after the game. It's like, hey, sometimes you just need the reminder that this is college hockey and it's going to be hard. Yeah. And what I really liked was later in the game, the middle stat Clark line was out there. And they just made smart possession play after possession play. And it led right into the Nelson line, getting a goal. And I was just like, thank you. (laughs) Like that is what a coach (laughs) loves to see is like, okay, Notre Dame did it to us. We can do it to them. And if Minnesota can get that mindset where it's not just about winning one-on-one battles or scoring points, if it's winning a shift with possession and building momentum, this team can get dangerous because this team isn't a nice, cooly, snugger, one-line team. This is going to have to be a depth-scoring team, and they have to learn to play that way and win games like they did on Saturday. And and we as fans of the team, it's it's so easy to get spoiled from what we saw a year ago mm-hmm. and just expect it to be normal. And it's not. It's a new year. It's you know, it's some different players, some different roles, all, you know, all of that different style, you know, look at last year, how many times literally every shift, either Johnson or Lacombe were down at the goal line, right. Mm -hmm. Making a play and they were cycling and, you know, all, all five guys cycling this year. You know, we haven't seen the defenseman sneaking up much yet. I think we will. You know, by the way, Luke Middlestead's been phenomenal. I will just say that. I want to get that so I don't forget. I think so, right? No. I don't know. I think he has been. But I, I think you'll see more involvement now with the defenseman as we move along. And we'll start to see a, a better forecheck, a more sustained forecheck. And um, I think you'll see more things happen um, offensively in um, as we move along. All right. Well, I want to get to a couple more of our sponsors here. We're going to hear from Ferda now. Are you tired of the same old fundraisers? Paying $15 for a stale bag of popcorn, chocolate candy bars melting in your car, and more frozen pizzas than you have freezer space. Introducing Ferda Fundraisers, a fundraising company with as much personality as the people who play the game. It's big, throw gas, yeah. hangers. Big dump for the boys. Choose from great products made by local companies, flexible plans built around your needs. Sell how you want and be supported from start to finish. Deliver max return without charging people a fortune. It's never been easier to support your community. Ignite your fundraising with FURTA Fundraisers. FURTA Boys, FURTA Girls, FURTA Community, FURTA Fundraisers. Notice John King is the narrating that one it was a great stuff from from kinger who was our guest next week so make sure you tune in next week for that but we also need to talk about our chill boys vigs chill boys um always got that 15 percent off pull tab 15 it's always great I've, I've loaded a new video so i'm gonna play it here but uh i just ordered some more this week so i've got more coming it's gonna be fun stuff vigs I think they're great fabric. Oh, 
Well, so here's a slightly different commercial for Chill Boys. Hi, I'm Kevin. As a decorated member of the ball crew, it's my job to make sure every ball is in good hands. With Chill Boys Anti-Friction Glide Zone, the boys stay cool and dry, which is why I recommend Chill Boys life-changing bamboo boxers and boxer briefs. With Chill Boys, the score is always love, love. Chill Boys, comfort where it counts. Oh, there's our Chill Boys. And like we said, bamboo boxers and briefs. Chillboys.com. Use the pull, uh, use the promo code PULLTAB15 for 15% off, Vigs. Um, we're loving this relationship with Chill Boys and all of our sponsors that PullTab has brought in this year. It's been, it's been a fun new experience for us. Yeah, it's fun. Like all the groups that they work with are local, tied yes. to Minnesota. I mean, I know somebody in our chat was saying, "Oh, it's Wiper Lake." It's like it's not just Wiper Lake; it's one Minnesota. <laughs> and so, I, I think supporting local is always awesome. So it's, it's fun to work tough. with everybody in the the Pull Tab Sports family. All right, I'm gonna bring Pat back in here. There he is. I wanted to talk about one thing before we get into Michigan State. Um, uh, Pat, last weekend. Mikey Kester got beat up on Saturday Oof. night. Um, I happened to be between the benches in the second period when he was went off twice. There was his face was in pain. I thought for sure, yeah, maybe he can finish the game, but I I wasn't sure he's gonna be able to play the next day because you know how it is. You wake up the next day day and you're popping Advil and you're in pain. Oh, what a trooper. Hmm. He came out and played so well and <laughs> His assist on Pitlick's goal was just Beautiful. calm and cool. And just how about a weekend that kid had from up and down, beat up to Mr. Success at the end? You know, he, he's got such a great attitude. He's such a great kid. Um, you know, he wanted to come back. And, uh, boy, it's it's a godsend to have him back there just to, you know, to help with those other younger guys who are taking on – the larger roles now, but yeah, you're right. A after he first got hurt, I thought, Oh no, 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 not the yes. least. And, and I saw him, you know, cause I saw him go down the tunnel and he was writhing in pain and he started walking it off. I'm like, Oh, you know, good, good, good. And then he came back, comes out the next shift. Right. And he gets cross checked right in the lower back drew a penalty. Um, and he was in, so much pain then he i don't was. know if it was more or less but you know but 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 you know what that's what it that's what a captain does you know he just you know he kind of like okay guys look at me you know look at me and uh and yeah i, I was and the play he made on on the pit like goal was you know oh. terrific. just waited waited the perfect amount of time got it in the goal scorer's hand and uh you know, pick pit put it away. Well, I think one of the things with that play is that Kester, like we were talking about with Oliver Moore, he knows how to manipulate space and time. Yeah, he right. knows how to slow it down, change a passing angle, and create an offensive play that's not there if you just go, go, go. He knows when to calm the game, when to yep. speed it up, when to pass the puck, when to throw it at the net. Mike Kester's hockey IQ is his number one skill. And maybe his toughness is his number two skill right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you don't have to play a hundred miles an hour all the time because it, it mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work and you're, you're dead on, you know, he just waited and waited. The D moved his leg just a little bit, boom, right between it. And, uh, you know, Pitlick got there and, you know, it was simple, right? Simple. And, and the big key, the big key to it is I'm sure Mike Kester scanned the ice and yeah. realized he didn't have a ton of back pressure. And so they had the time yes. to do that. You yep. know, scanning the ice is such an important skill for a hockey player to learn and know where people are. You know, Pat was talking about count the number of guys in front of you. Now you know if you can go. Scan the ice. Count the guys behind you. Know how many are trying to catch you. Mike Kester, I guarantee you, has that map of the rink in his head. Yes, no doubt. No doubt. And, you know, if, and if I'm Vishal there, too, um, you know, I, I maybe would have cheated a little bit more because the goaltender's got to know if a guy's coming down too, right? And uh, and 
you know, I don't know if he would have been able to to get over there and make the save, but you know, that's all part of the thinking part of the game. Uh, some guys have it. Some guys takes a little bit longer. Some guys never get it. Never, <laughs> never. Played for with both you. <laughs> for both of you, has Pitlick awakened? Well, he, I'll, can I go first? Oh, go for it. He, um, I want to see it every weekend. I want to see him score every weekend because he has the ability to do that. Sometimes he gets sample ranta on, on us <laughs> where he'll just turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and go in the corner and turn and not be not by the net. And then there's times where he makes the exact perfect play and he has, and when he does that, when he takes the right route, when he, um, when he slows it down a hair and doesn't stick handle, mm -hmm. um, trying to break a world record and how many times he goes back and forth when he, when he slows it down a little bit, he can be really effective. I thought he was their best forward the other night, Saturday night. Um, that, you know, aside from the goal, just his energy and his awareness and you know what? We didn't have a four check going. I'm going to get our four check going was the attitude that he had. And I, and I, and I thought he was really, really good, but we've seen in the past where it's okay. Good for a game or two, five off. And if he can bring that consistency every night, that's going to be a big key for Minnesota. Before Viggs, you, you talk about uh, Pitlick here. I saw this comment from Patrick Sullivan. Tell Pat to have a great Thanksgiving. And the reason why I bring up this one is that this Patrick Sullivan here is, is the son of a, of, of a guy who's been on my website for 20 years. And he has told us that he named his son, Patrick Sullivan, after Pat the Rat. You. <laughs> I am not kidding. He is. He he used to even call his little kid when when he came to a skate with us. Just his little little kid. He's he's now married. <laughs> yeah. He uh, they called him the Rat, Pat the Rat, and uh, our friend Sean Sullivan, his father, named him after you because you were his favorite player. Well, I'm I'm very flattered and uh, humbled by that. Thank you. So I just had this, I saw Pat was in there and I did. Bring that comment up. He said, and from a fellow, from a fellow rat. <laughs> all right, he's back at topic. Pitlick, mm. I, he he has been causing trouble, havoc all season, but we we, we kind of thought he, if he could get scoring, that could just, it could launch him. Yeah, I always think Rhett's confidence can kind of go up and down a little bit throughout the weekend, and for him to get on the score sheet is going to be great for him. He is mm. probably Minnesota's most active aggressive player he is not going to sit back and just watch the game he is always going to be aggressive he is always going to be attacking on the penalty kill when he comes out for that second shift look out because he's mm -hmm. going to make things happen and be aggressive the one thing with him that i would like to see improved is he's got to stop putting pucks south mm -hmm. a lot of times he will come north up the rink and he will make some kind of move to create space, and he will put pucks south back towards his own net and not quite be aware of what's going on in the rink. Incredible. He does yeah. not have that Mike Kester you know, ma mental map of the rink where everybody is all the time. So he's just got to be a little bit more sure of those situations because when he's being aggressive, he's one of the most dynamic players in college hockey, and it's fun to watch. It, it really is. He's oh. got to cut out the the south stuff and just be northeast west, you know. Yeah. You know, you you get um at, at least as a former player. You you know, you see guys out there and you and you see things that you could never do. And it's like, okay, now if I could just get him to, you know, do this, you mm -hmm. know, or 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 have this mentality, you know, oh my gosh. Um, but because he he is he is so talented, 
you know, as are others. But man, you know, you just you, you hope that, you know, it clicks and it really all because when it comes together completely for him, watch out. Mm. I mean, he can be that good. When we're, when we're talking about Oliver Moore, I mean, able to add more tricks to his bag. Yeah. Rhett's got all the tricks. Yeah. <laughs> Rhett, Rhett has all the tricks in the bag and he can execute them. He's just got to figure out when to use each trick. Exactly. Yes. Because yeah. he can execute. It's it's Put fun him to watch ring. him. I love watching him on the rink. Yep. Exactly. Michigan State Vigs, um, they come into town uh, quite a few points ahead of the Gophers right now. Um, in first place in the Big Ten. Good for them. They're young. I don't think they're going to stay there, but hey, they started hot last year as well. So maybe they're more for real this year. Yeah. I mean, when you sweep Wisconsin, that's quite the statement because Wisconsin's yeah. playing pretty well. You know, Mike Hastings brought part of the Mankato State Mavericks to <laughs> the Cole Center, and they are a tough team to beat. And Michigan State pulled off two big ones, which is a surprise to me. I didn't think I saw that coming last weekend. 14 straight I, I over it. Michigan State. 14 straight, Pat. Yeah. Here's a stat for you. Are you ready? Four guys that are new on the team, transfer guys. 55 points in 12 games combined. 55 mm. points in 12 games out of the four transfers that came in. That's a big difference for them. Savage, yeah. uh, the kid from Duluth, uh, Howard. Howard, um, a defenseman, and somebody else. I whatever. Don't have, have his name in front of me, but that's been a big difference. Um, and then they have they have some returning guys that were really young a year ago that are good players. Uh, Russell Dorwart, uh, yeah, those guys. Are, are 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 pretty good players. They're not elite, but they're they're pretty good. So they have more depth. They have four freshman defensemen that they play. And that will be something that I think Minnesota is going to have to attack this weekend. Is to really because you know I, I was having this conversation oh uh, with a with one of the all American defensemen at the U. I can't remember who. And uh you know, we were talking about putting pressure on a defenseman. I said to him, um, you know, I don't care. Or Paul, it was Paul Martin. And I said, Paulie, how'd you like when when a, when a, a guy was coming on you? I said, it's pretty tough, right? Didn't matter how good you were. He said, no. You know, when I have time and space, yeah, I can make a pass. But when, it, when the guy's right on me, awfully hard, awfully hard to make that first clean pass. And so I think it's really, really important for Minnesota to, you know, get their four check rolling on this team and, and let them know, Hey, you know, you're playing us again and I don't care who you beat before, but you're playing us. And, and so I think that's really key. I think it's another key is um, their freshman goaltender. Yeah. I was about to say that. Yes. All the accolades in the world. Right. But also a lot of pressure on them. And so, do how do do I know if he's any good or not? I not, you know I don't, but um, you know I I think it's important that you get in his face, you talk to him, you know you you let him know that it's not going to be an easy weekend, uh, you know all the things like that. You you know you gotta you gotta play a little mind game with with some of these players too. Can they get it to 16 straight over Michigan State Vigs? What do you think? I mean, 14 is a you know, I, I know us our gopher ho uh, gopher hockey stats guy game notes. He's been amazing with stuff. He says they had they had won 20 some odd straight, but it was literally almost a hundred years ago <laughs> against Michigan State. Winning 14 straight over any team in this day and age is difficult. Can they keep it going? Well, I think you got to keep in mind, Michigan State's a completely different team this year than those previous 14 games. Yeah. They have a new coach. You know, they drew four aces out of the deck in the transfer portal. They've got a, a good hand right now. And the key for Minnesota, 
I think is to not think about winning the 15th game in a row against Michigan State. It's about playing like how they did on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And if they yeah. can do that, I don't think Michigan State has had that crucible to, to handle that kind of game. But if Minnesota plays like they did on Friday where they have lapses, Michigan State's got a lot more talent this year. I think it's going to be tricky for Minnesota to win two this weekend. Okay, I think they're going to win two. I think Michigan State is a team that is on the rise. I think they're doing, you know, they're getting recruits there. But let's not re- let's not forget, they still have guys that don't know how to win there yet. Yeah, they, they got a good record now. And they, you know, they're coming up and they're feeling good. But they still, I, I, I'm, I'm of the belief that it takes you time to learn how to win and learn how to win consistently and hold it and hold it and hold that winning edge and attitude. That's my belief. Um, I think, um, I think Minnesota is going to sweep them this weekend. That's what I'm going with. I am with you hundred percent. Let's get this bandwagon going folks. Take Come that, on. Feeds, Mr. Negative. <laughs> The other weird thing about this weekend is it's what? a Friday, Sunday. True. Yeah. People sometimes say I make too big a deal of this. Playing at one o'clock on a Sunday afternoon after a holiday weekend is a challenge. And sometimes this Minnesota team has not played well in those afternoon home games. So I worry about that energy. I could see a tight game that goes to overtime on Sunday. And who wins? Let's go. Either Gophers Minnesota win overtime. overtime. They win in overtime. Boy, on that, that's Sweep for the Gophers. Attitude I'm looking for out of you. <laughs> Just for you, Pat. Thank you, Eric. Uh, <laughs> well, Pat, thanks for coming on our 250th episode. Hey. We got, you know, we would have been starting right about now. So we're getting you to bed at a more normal time tonight. Yes. Um, you guys have done a wonderful job. You're great supporters of the program. We give each other grief once in a while. Oh gosh, that's the fun. That's what hockey people do. That's what we do. That's, that's what, what we do. I will see you both this weekend. Congratulations again. You should be very proud. Well, thank you, Pat, and thank you for joining us on this 250th episode. Like Pat said, it's going to be a big weekend down at Mariucci. Um, We'll be back next week and joining us, the Kinger himself, John King from Pull Tab Sports. It's going to be fun to have him on. Um, That's going to do it for the live show. For the rest of us, we're going to have some overtime coming up, some drinks, and and some guests coming on as well. So stay tuned for overtime. And for the rest of you, we'll catch you next week on the GPL Podcast. Oh my, he did jump on. Look at that. Look at that. He doesn't have the cam going though, of course. Of course, he's got to be incognito. Okay, let's bring him on. Hammy, how in the hell are you, man? So, I'm only not on camera because I am with somebody and I just didn't want to to have to put her on camera too so but hold on you're not the only one you know we lost pat for the show because he Who never Mc- goes over time he's passed by him so let's bring in you're talking you're talking micheletti or what oh yeah we had pat micheletti on okay so we're gonna replace one micheletti with another let's bring in alex micheletti alex Ship change yes. Ship change. yes what's going Ship on change. fellas <laughs> from one micheletti to another and then we've got hammy of course, I had to bring Hammy back because, Hammy, you were there back in show number one. And I highly recommend anybody going back on the podcast, like Apple Podcasts or something, and listen to our first show and listen to how brutal it was. God, it probably was. I think it was. What, it what was. year was that? 13 2000. years ago. Oh, that was 2000. 
Was that 2010? Yeah. It's got to be 13 years. Yeah. Damn. St. Olaf math. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Hopkins math. That's like um, Nick Bukestad uh, era, right? Of Gopher. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, I remember I was living in Plymouth at the time with. I need an opener. So that was a while ago. Hold on. I've got wine. Got an opener. Got a glass. I'm ready to. <laughs> now, hold on. So Viggs, hold on. Viggs was pouring, but you got to tell us what it was. I'm sorry. So many people jumped on here. You got to tell I us know. what it is, Viggs. So Bourbon County brand stout, 2016 version. Uh, comes out on Black Friday. So I thought, you know, being Thanksgiving week, uh, take one out of the cellars from the Rob Shield collection so seven years old tastes delicious sweet uh imperial stout all right a little bit of bourbon barrel in it well hammy what have you been up to man uh work a <laughs> lot of i mean honestly that's pretty much why i couldn't keep doing the podcast whatever years ago is just a lot of travel and whatever. All that part slowed down some, but and, and and you lost one of your big uh guys giving you all the info too, didn't you? Oh well, yeah. Well, <laughs> that what that wasn't the only that wasn't the reason. I mean, he was still around at the. I mean, he, yeah, that wouldn't have been a problem. But yeah, Coach Cancel will always have a a place in my heart. He was a good dude. I'm struggling with this damn bottle of wine here. I think I'll ever be on his uh, blacklist when uh, the coaching staff broke up. He did not appreciate me reporting his salary, and you know, well, he, he would have been one of my choices. Though. It's public knowledge. He was pretty upset about that. Um, really, he was, huh? Yeah, I got a nasty DM, and that was it. One and done. He might drop me. Wow. But oh, it's you know, public. I mean, oh. what, what, <laughs> anybody can see that. Yeah, so, it's tough. Jupe, Jupe, when was the first, uh, like the year, the beginning of the year press conference? When was the first one that you ever went to? Do you remember? It was the beginning of the 2007 2008 season. You know, the, I was at the one, the, the, the year that they won the national championship. What was it? 2000, the 2001, so 2001 2002 oh. season. So, yeah, so I remember 2000. Okay. Yeah, because I remember I was, I don't remember who I was, I was doing some freelance work at the time, writing, and I remember interviewing uh, Keith Ballard when he was a freshman. Really? Yeah, that's a, this is a wow. forever ago. I know. Alex, what were you doing in 2002? Uh, I was in... <laughs> were you in your diapers? Yeah, I was in <laughs> elementary school, so man, that's, oh, that's a geez. long time ago. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. <laughs> but, so, uh, so, Alex, I would say, you know, I had seen you around the rink for a while. Yeah. A little bit. But the, really, the kind of first time I met you, we sat next to each other in Mankato mm -hmm. a couple seasons ago. And we watched a terrible game. <laughs> it's it brutal. It, it was so it was so boring and lame. Yeah, it was a, it was a 3-2 Mankato win or something mm -hmm. like that. Dude. Both teams just stink tonight. <laughs> yeah, it was, that that happens in college hockey, right? Uh, it, you just, it does. You, you never know with. Uh, well, you, you can't say eighteen to twenty-two. It, now it's like you know twenty-one to twenty-five mostly, but you just never know what you're going to get with uh, with with college hockey players <laughs> if they want to show up or not. So yeah, that was, that was interesting. By the way, I've got box run out of New Ulm, out of. Uh, Morgan Creek Vineyards. It's my favorite wine. Hey, so do you guys do a chat on this thing or what? Like, I haven't been on here forever. So yeah, well, we the, actually, I don't know if you, if you're on your phone, I don't know how you see it on your phone. I'm on my computer, but there is an actual chat. I mean, we got Brever. I could put that up here. He's like, is, what, did I, is, what did I miss? Uh, is is Mote on there? Mote has been here a lot, man. I haven't seen him tonight, though. I haven't seen him tonight, but he is here a lot. He's not is that a fr I'm frequent uh, commenter. Yeah, Moti's been disappointed. around for a while. Yeah, oh, he's he was from Mankato, wasn't he? 
because he would always talk shit with that one guy who was a Mavericks fan that he used to call him Mav Stink or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, this video thing has just completely changed the podcast. It really has. It's amazing. That's yeah, a good way to get new fans. Uh, you know, I do Locked On Wild with Seth Topol, um, and yeah, it's amazing. We. Uh, we get fan, wild fans from all over the world that watch, you know, and it's, it's amazing. We have, there's people in Russia and, you know, like we get Russian commenters. And so I always have to like, uh, I do the Google translate to respond back to them in Russian. Really? So, yeah. The, yeah. The writing of Russians just, you know, looks like hieroglyphics, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's cool well, to we... like translate and see what they're, what they're, you know, what they're asking or responding to. When we get the Russian R's, it's usually a bot that we have to block. Right. So we don't until, have many until, until Bob, uh, until Bob and Ben go to you know Russia to recruit. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't I'm gonna know. have to work on my suite ones. for next year when they get yeah. uh, Paul's from over, but yeah, we'll see. So one thing that Alex hasn't noticed on Streamyard, you guys you use Streamyard all the time, don't you? Yes. Yep. Well, you don't use the headline function, so I'm about to change no. it for you. Look at that. There it is. <laughs> Wow, that's better. That's cleaner, man. You guys got to start using that headline. Function. Yes, I'll, I'll definitely ask Seth to do that. Well, we, we showed Marissa that too. She's like, "Oh, wow." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we use Streamyard for the college hockey podcast we do too. So, and I think Viggs, you did you get it from him or was it uh, Hoppy that we learned about Streamyard? Well, I think it was Hoppy who who showed it off and and uh, figured it out from there. Oh, so. okay. Hey, it's been so a good fit for us. They have two. They have two games against Michigan State this weekend, right? Friday, Sunday. Friday, Sunday. Okay. Are you ever going to get to a game again, Hammy? Come on, dude. I was okay. So I was actually potentially going to be going last weekend because um, my girl has like a friend with that has season tickets. So I was like, we had talked about going to at least one game, but then she got busy with some family stuff so we didn't go last weekend but well that's too bad man well, 14 yeah. in a row against michigan state right 14 that's in a row. that's what's a wild that's a wild streak it is there obviously was, uh, what the minnesota wild are doing though right now <laughs> exactly that's it's brutal and locked on wild is like gallows humor right now i know that well the reward <laughs> the reward uh, on friday is the avalanche too you know so that's Unbelievable. And they the Avalanche are coming in off a game where they completely lost it in the last 15 seconds. They gave up uh, the tying goal. And then the, on the next shift, Nashville scored again. So Nashville ended up winning uh, by, you know, uh, in the last like 15 seconds. It was crazy. Just what you want is a motivated McCarr and McKinnon <laughs> coming to yeah. town. Really mad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It'll be a hate watch, which we've exactly. seen, you know, Hammy's been through that with the Gophers where you just feel <laughs> like every Gopher fan out there almost takes pleasure in ripping the program when they lose. And when you go through a coaching change, you know, the knives are out and it's yes. just brutal to deal with. Oh yeah. That was always fun. <laughs> and then listening to everybody talk about how, Lucia won two national titles with all Woog players. I'm mean, like, uh, you realize that basically the senior class of his first championship was Woog, but other than that, it was all his guys. And then 2003 was his, it was his whole team except for, well, I think it was Nick Anthony, something Might like that. Been. I think he was the only player that Woog had, or uh, yeah, that Woog had recruited that was still on the team. So, yeah. You know, all that kind of wonderful people don't argument. get it. It's not just skill and how good your team is. Sometimes it just comes down to downright luck. Things just come together at the right time. If Jackson Nelson's an opening face off in overtime doesn't go in the Quinnipiac bench, maybe we have a different <laughs> outcome in Tampa. You know, like he won the opening draw of overtime, and then they just. Lose it like that. Okay, okay, Alex. Jupe, Jupe, are you still taking pictures and stuff at the games? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was, I was, I was at on the bench uh, when Kester was hurt twice last weekend in the second period. And so that it's your kid, fault? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was in pain. I mean, he was wincing really hard. They need him. Without him, when he doesn't play, 
they just look True. completely lost on the back end. But you know, after watching Ryan Chesley too, if he if he could play more like he like he did against Notre Dame, he can't play more minutes though. That's just the I problem. know. Yeah, I mean, but that goal he had was incredible. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's what Washington wants to see for sure. No favor on the ice was the mistake. Yeah, we know. Yeah. And Faber kind of even said it with that podcast with the with Kanger. And so are, you still, are, are, you still, are you still in the doghouse, Jupe, with uh like the uh sports information director and all that? Or is that no, but now? that 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 doghouse sports information director <laughs> is gonna be on the podcast here in a little bit. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yep. That Deutsch, did, yeah, that, we, we got it, Deutsch lined up been, to come on. I think it might have been him that had like go for hockey Twitter account like unfollow me after i think i ripped on uh cammy or something like that like i think that was the podcast where i was like just went off on cammy like big time and, camarada uh, right? yeah exactly yep. camarada, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. then he got all bitter about it and said but it the was thing unprofessional. is he, and i'm like dude i'm not professional i'm a i'm a freaking fan i can say whatever I he want. he was doing a lot less twitter stuff at the end any social media so and now the sid literally does Almost nothing with social media, right, Biggs? I mean, yeah, I maybe mean, they've a got a couple guys here and there. But... It. Social media for a team in Minnesota is brutal. You get so much hate Twitter, and it's just like it's hard to have the armor where you don't feel it. I think it takes a special human to uh, just like <laughs> let that roll over your, you know, head and just say, ah, I'm just going to focus on what I do so negative out there the it's comment hard. sections are crazy and then you get the well, facebook's you know, the worst fans oh my goodness yeah yeah 100 percent. gpl's the worst what are you talking about <laughs> no it's not it's been better lately right True. i yeah. haven't i haven't read it that much so i i like, see I'll, on there once in a while still yeah i'll do you might not be posted but i see on there <laughs> i I'll, I'll do flybys once in a while and see <laughs> Usually I like to go back and reminisce about how people cry about not having every game on TV or like, what's the schedule? I can't figure out the schedule. Like this weekend's perfect, right? They get pissed off if it's not Saturday. Why is it a Friday, Saturday? It's supposed to be Friday, Saturday, every seven o'clock, seven o'clock, Friday, Saturday. Are they still <laughs> complaining that it's not on uh, MSC? <laughs> yeah, I think we've blast from, from the past. They yeah. complain now they it. wish it was on FSN and FSN was on every streaming and provider mm -hmm. right now. Which it's not. It's complicated. It's all downhill. Well, no, and the other thing is, is with social media is now see that's why I started posting and doing all that stuff back in the nineties is there was no recruiting coverage at all. And like I would hear stuff all the time and like it wouldn't be you remember when Sid Hartman used to like as soon as I would say something on like Pride on Ice or GPL, Sid Hartman would have in his column like a day later. He must he his whoever his intern must have been just cruising through GPL looking for news. He must have been <laughs> in the originals somehow. Could have been, I don't know. Yeah. Now every player announces their own commitment on social media, so you don't Instagram need Instagram and you don't need you don't need people like me anymore. So. Well, hockey is still a little different when it comes to recruiting because the players are still quiet about it. You know, they're not as vocal as like the football and basketball guys like, hey, I'm here on my official visit. It's still <laughs> little under the radar. So. All right. Well, hopefully he's out there. Hopefully he's got a beverage, but uh, oh, it looks like he's got water. But let's bring him in. Former SID. Yeah. Ryan Deutsch. <laughs> there he is. What's up, guys? Yes. How is it going, Mr. Deutsch? Uh, everything's pretty good. I, I was listening. I, you guys must be really desperate for a viewership if you invited <laughs> me just for the plus one. But You know, it's <laughs> it's the 250th episode. We had to bring on as many people, and I'm like, what a perfect time to bring you on. Well, I mean, I haven't watched the show quite as much as when I was working, but like <laughs> the production value has just gone through the roof. And I mean, I guess it really, this, uh, this is a great episode because it speaks to the highs and lows. You had the Micheletti family on for the high. and <laughs> we Hammy on for low? Hammy on for the low. Not, no, no, I was listening to that. I do I do need to, I, I, was, I have some holes in this story because I don't think I was the one that reached out to you, but I definitely had Cammy. Cammy was here with me. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm misremembering or if you are, but... And, and Cotner will always be in, in my doghouse. Um, 
I don't know what he can do so, to get so out. Wait, of that. <laughs> why am I in the doghouse? For, for, uh, for that, that was what your guys' original conversation was. Uh, you you repeated something that was said on the bench that absolutely should not have been repeated, and and we had to <laughs> we had to red flag you for that one. But well, I I'll say it now because it doesn't matter now because literally Mike Genzel. Said, wait 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 wait. Uh-oh. You say it doesn't matter right now. He, he might text me and still yell at me. <laughs> I might get a second DM from Mike Genzel if this comes out again. You know, I got the one in the mic drop. You thought you were I, dumb, might get, I might get a second. He's back. Uh, he likes me. So say, that's I'll, all start, I'll start coaching when you guys start playing. But there was some language in there. Yeah, George so, making notes, I, notes I, right here. Well, yeah, I remember sometimes you would be like, okay, you're on – you have a day off. You're ready to go hunting. When's the show going to start? You, I'm trying to fill some time. You guys haven't started your show on time. When you've been down in Southwest Minnesota. <laughs> I think that's just Brian taking shots at me because he knows it's probably my fault as I'm raising young children. And I just want to know, Brian, did your child get to sleep tonight? No, on I, time? I don't. You know, you guys got so much heat from Pat about how, how late you wanted, but just... <laughs> keep going back let's do this thing at midnight you know, I, my my wife was out with her friends and i was on uh solo duty for a little bit and got the kid down to sleep and i'm like let's, let's go i gotta get this going now and now she's home i hope he's still sleeping but hey jupe i gotta sign off all right thanks hammy for joining us an original guy original podcast thanks hammy yeah hammy, we'll be, great. i'll be i'll be on again sometime with you guys well, I mean, grateful, man. grateful for all the great shifts you took in the past. It was really fun. I think you helped build Go for Buck Live up. Appreciate that a lot. Yeah, Cheers you bring you, Cardinal. Amy. You bring a Cardinal on or what? No Cardinal tonight. Okay. All right. No all country right, clump. He's a he only guy. does K fan. He only does K fan now. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> and there's Brever. Thanks, Hammy. Beep. Later, Hammy. Later. There he goes. Hammy Deutscher. How's it going, man? It's just, it, you're drinking water, though. You need something. Well, okay. I, I did think I was going to get shamed for this. So I did bring, I got to I gotta support the hometown. Got take 16 from Laverne. Uh, what is I really that? didn't okay, want to drink it, show, but I kind of thought I'd go to us. I got to do this right. Ooh, there, there we go. Very nice. I'm not a huge <laughs> drinker in general. I'm not a beer drinker, really. But, you know, for you guys, I'll pull one out. Representing there. Love it. Very nice. Copper lager. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Vigo knows I'm not, uh, I kind of have a gutter palate when it comes to beer, but that one's pretty good. Your thought talent in gut is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> like, like we did a, like a tour of the twin cities for a while when Brian left, I was like, well, we got to go do a couple different places. We can't just do Bona all the time. So we had to get a few more places involved. Uh, we got to continue that tour here soon because uh, you, it's you know good fuck. It's tough getting up to you now, especially you know, you're busy and you know my son's five, so he's got a bunch of stuff going on. And but I do miss it. Don't yeah, miss so you, but I miss the fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> you started at the Minnesota Daily, didn't you, Deutscher? Yep. Yep. That was my uh, my first day as a freshman. I started the Daily, and uh, it was utterly terrifying. Uh, actually, someone. I won't I won't name names, but uh, I got I got yelled at my first phone call and uh, <laughs> almost went home and was just like, I, I, I don't think I should be here. Like, I might drop out and go back to Laverne. Well, well, who else is a Minnesota Daily alum? This kid right here. Drew Cole. Good to see it. See, Deutsch, I might have quit. I, I, there was a few times right right at the beginning. I was like, "Oh boy, this this Deutsch guy does not w- want want me around." <laughs> I feel like I was nice to you. No, you were. No, you were. I'm just I'm I'm just messing around. But no. congrats <laughs> on 250, guys. Congrats. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Great to thanks be here. I have I some you. angels envy right here. I, I, angels envy. Ooh, I saw you in the chat. I'm like, well, I got to send Cove an invite to come join us. <laughs> yeah, it's an aggressive move. I like it. Yeah, I'll be doing the whiskey tomorrow. There you go. Yeah, it's it's a Friday, right? I was confused. I was thinking it was Friday. It's like, oh, you're going to the game hammered? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
You wouldn't believe how many times I had people come to the tailgate before the final five, have a few drinks. Yeah, I'm going to go to the X with <laughs> booze and beer on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stumble down to the bench. All right, I'm, I'm here to shoot. I don't need a helmet. <laughs> and, and Biggs, you know as well as I do, I don't even drink after the games. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty clean. So good for my you. brothers. Have way too too many DWIs between the two of them. I have zero. I'd like to keep it that way. It's very smart. So very I drink smart. at home. Drink at home. That's the way to do it. Do Alex, Alex, what, yes. Alex, what do you think of our podcast? You know, Alex, Lockdown Wild do... does a thousand. So, <laughs> what, what's your take on us? No, I love it. Uh, you Younger have, uh, generation. You have a loyal loyal following. I, I tune in every week, so it's uh you know, it's always, you know, it's nice to get your guys' perspective. You know, I'm always, I'm always watching different podcasts just to, you know, take in, you know, what I can uh, when I'm on podcasts. So, you know, I, I enjoy it. And like I said, this uh, college hockey fans are, it's a unique, loyal fan base too. It's a small it niche group, uh, you know, and so, you know, you see the same people commenting on, you know, you know, message boards and remember the U S uh, CHO message boards. That, oh, that's, God. Right so, yeah. that's where it all how started. You, that's where it all started. How, how are you old enough for that one? Cause yeah. I feel like the U S CHO board kind of died out. Yeah. Maybe. I'm 32. So I'm right at the, like, yeah, right at the edge of it. But. Okay. And now the hard question: What is, what does Pat say about the team on the on the rides home from the rink? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's easy, <laughs> it's colorful for sure. Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, I, I love it though. It you know it's you know it's it's you know going to the rink with him is is the best. You know it's it, 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 to hear his perspective is is awesome. You know, and he's he's always a straight shooter. He's never yeah, you know not gonna tell it how it is. That's that's what I love about him. So yeah, it's 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 awesome. So at Tampa last year, mm -hmm. he was sitting at one of those uh, little banquet tables, having a meal before the game. I said, Pat, what do you think? What's going to happen? <laughs> They're going to smoke him five to one. <laughs> Not even close. I'm like, okay. That would be wonderful. I wanted to ask him what happened tonight, but then I'm like, you know. He might just go on talking for 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever been a full believer in Quinnipiac. So, uh, <laughs> you know, they could win again and he'd, you know, he'd probably be the same, same way. <laughs> well, I had kind of felt the same way about Quinnipiac. Like yeah. I'd seen Ram Pecknold coach the world junior team and they would fall behind and they would not change a thing. Right. And I would just be like, you have the best American players in the world and you're on the world junior stage and you're not going to make an adjustment. You're just going to run out the clock and hope their talent takes over. I thought the same thing was going to happen in the frozen four, right. but no, he totally flips the switch. Like there's pressure on every puck that gets deep and they played their trap when they had to, and they, they won it. I mean, a lot of people are upset about that game. It was not an easy game for Minnesota. No, yeah. they had him on their heels the entire time. Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, hard to watch. Uh, honestly, it's it's still too soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's probably just a little bit oh, relieved though that they didn't win the year after. No. You <laughs> right after, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, City, right? I was pretty. Would that have been with, crushing? Would that have been crushing? That they people, won? like it, it was odd because you know I spent. I dedicated 10 years of my life and that yeah. was really yeah. until I got married and had my son. Like that was everything I did. I missed weddings. I missed holidays. And, and that's, I knew that when I took the job and that's perfectly fine. But um, there was a part of me that was like, Oh man, they are so good. Like they're going to, they're going to win this. And it's going to be the, the year I'm not that I, the year after I leave, like this stinks. <laughs> but then I also tell people like, I still love all those guys. And Almost even more importantly than that, I don't want anyone else to win. So, like, yeah, I'm still going for them. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was rough. I was, we had kind of talked about maybe going, uh, and I, I feel bad. I'm just so glad we didn't because that would have been crushing to be there and and have that happen right in front. I of would us. say it was not so bad since it was Tampa. I could see that, but as such a good, as, such a good show. The one, the one thing I will say, and a lot of you guys have been uh, part of this, the worst part of the hockey season is the media availability after the last game. And I don't think you could have paid me enough money to have to do our job after that scenario. 
in that game. So that plane you know, ride home had to been oh my goodness, I couldn't even imagine. Well, Especially how for was a guy it, like how was it the year before? Too. Yeah, how was it the year before? Losing well, the year before Russia? was interesting because some of us stayed behind. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Well, what because, the because Myers Myers had the Hobie Baker. Uh, Hobie Baker. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh, uh, uh, Benny and and Bob and I stayed behind, and that was its whole you know Ugh. a whole different experience because you're kind of like, okay, I just want to go home, but you know, I I don't know. Obviously, I'm I'm never gonna be anything but a Gopher hockey supporter, and I thought he had a pretty good chance to win. So it's kind of like, okay, we gotta. You know, we had everything in the pipe ready to go in case he won. And then then when he didn't win, and, and not only did he not win, but somehow a Hobie Baker finalist was a second-team All-American, uh, you're just like, whoa, okay, well, can we just get on a <laughs> plane and go home now? Because this, I might have honestly been more upset about him not winning the Hobie and being a second-team All-American than losing to Mankato. Because at least Mankato, like, you know, that first period, uh, what was it? Uh, Brodzy scored a pretty goal. Yeah. And and then it just kind of didn't it fell apart on us. But at least like halfway through the game, you're like, okay, like this is this is happening. It stinks, but it happened. Now we have to move on. Uh, but then to just stay in Boston, and Boston's a great town. It's just not my favorite place to be. I was like, I just want to go home. T- Tampa was, I would say, Tampa was just so much different, just because they just they put on a great show and. I do. I do got to jump in. Uh, you know that that day after losing the Mankato did stink, but it was really fun to have uh, Colin Schmidt get recognized for being the smartest guy at the Frozen Four. I think you won it last year too, didn't he? You guys don't know about the Elite Eighty Nine Award? Come on, who? Colin Schmidt. What award? <laughs> the Elite Eighty Nine Award. It's the most important award they give that weekend. Oh, you listen, pay, I'm sorry. You pay for you, that one? Yeah. It's yeah. the it's the highest GPA at uh, every NCAA championship. Okay. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> All right. And you, come on, I'm old. I'm yeah. always hey. I'm always gonna be on. I'm gonna be behind the guys that don't get all the publicity. And and right. I mean, Colin Schmidt was like such a f- good dude. Um, mm-hmm. very interesting story, and and kind of one of those guys that came in and certainly didn't raise any issues or or make a fuss about anything, and just was part of the team, and the guys loved him, and uh. You know, the first thing that goes into my mind is like, oh, oh, more work that I have to do. I got to add this guy to the roster quick. Uh, it was during the COVID year, too. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Turned out great having him on the team and play it. You know, I didn't I thought he was going to be a practice player. And he ended up playing a substantial amount of games, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did fill in quite a bit up until the end of that. I, I have a question. How for you, Deutsch, how much does Sammy Walker hate the both of us, especially Viggs, you know, because. We ripped on him for half a season. He almost hit me on the 18th green at Les Bolstead the other day. <laughs> shot. Nice. After after he found out I was the group in front of him on 17. He's like, oh, you guys have been in front of us all day? We get to 18, we're on the green. It's like we know they're behind us. I know his drive is kind of like 210 away in the left rough. All of a sudden, ball lands right on the green. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> Facts. Facts. I can, I can face it. Wait, yeah. are we – Vigo, are you pretending that I wasn't with you? And that this wasn't you, several weeks or months ago. I know. Okay, and that's okay. why you can. That's why you can explain it. In my that's why you are. Again? You are. You are in the absolute. Yeah, he Brilliant. Would do it again if he could. If he could do it again, Sam would totally hit that. Sh- He'd be like, I can do it again. Shot him. <laughs> no, I mean it's really hard to keep track of of all the guys that hate you guys. Um, <laughs> no, in all honesty, I don't. You know, if you guys don't tell me that someone's upset with you, I usually don't hear about it. Um. So I, honestly, I don't know that Sammy's ever explained expressed to me that his uh, displeasure with either one of you. You know, just Jess Myers, right? Just, just Jess. Jess is a great guy. He's, <laughs> he's in Arizona right now, right? Yeah, he is. I wouldn't know that. I did. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he just posted a picture about a lake or something like that. Oh, he's, at a, he's at a very <laughs> hey, nice Marriott. Hey, you know what? Uh, you can complain about it, but if I was, I'd be bragging about being in Arizona too. <laughs> <laughs> I I would say we we're might be I would say Viggs, you may have been harder on Coach Motzko about how he used Walker than actually Walker himself. Probably because he looks so dangerous when they put him at wing. 
and he was always going to be a wing as a professional. So mm-hmm. I just did not understand the decision to just continue to do what they did. And uh, I wish Ben Myers would have stuck around for one more year so he could have oh. gotten out of that and had that success, you know, without that issue happening every night where you have a player who so clearly should be playing wing playing 25, 22 minutes a game at center. It was just, it was just a bad situation. And I, I think the team last year made that switch when they went from, you know, just trying to keep everything running to Bob's team. And I think it was still a little bit Don's team when they went to Boston and they just still had some of those issues that came out in that Minnesota state game. But that was a, that was a terrible game. That was a selfish hockey game where you had players forcing and pressing and they want to win so bad. I know they want to make plays, but they just gave the game away to a team that was like waiting to take it. And that was a I wanna, Mike Hastings. I want to know. I want to know what Mike Hastings has on Bob. Like he, <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what team he's coaching. He he somehow knows how to beat Bob. It, uh, every every team should ask Mike what what the secret is. But uh, I don't know. It's. I mean, that a couple of weeks ago, seeing that sweep at home, I I couldn't believe it. Um, Have older players that don't make mistakes and yeah, learn true. learn when they can touch the stove. They can sweep Minnesota and Michigan. That's he's he builds teams that can that can beat that can beat the that type of team, right? True, true. And now you give Mike a talented team with first round picks, right? Let's now see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How's the beer, Biggs? It's fantastic. I love Bourbon County, especially around this time of the year. I'm debating what's the next choice. Drew, you know, what are you drinking? Are you drinking anything? He's got the Angels Envy. Angels Envy. That's right. This is a great choice. Good bourbon. Uh, look for some of their cast drink stuff if you're a bourbon guy. Bart, Alex, do you have, a, Bart Alex, do you have any special beverage? Anything you need? Uh, no, I don't. Not, not right now. I apologize um, for next time. But. You see, I don't. Maybe Alex is not quite the the watcher and listener because Alex is always. I am, nice. I am, but Thanksgiving episode is always a heavy drinking episode. Because <laughs> when, when I when we had Justin close on, I brought out like a sports drink. You know, yeah, you know, I was like, "Hey, what's your sports drink of choice?" And you know, he's like, oh, "I like the Gato." You know, it's good stuff. <laughs> Wait, he said Gatorade. Yeah, I, I think so. We're, they're they're Powerade school. They're Coke school. That? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, boy. It's Coke school. I'll have to go back to the tape. I mean, he, he did See, say duck, duck, That's boost. why players shouldn't be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys no, no, no. He was like no, in the no, middle no. of the woods, no, no. right? All right? That was, or he was. Players should not home. be on the podcast because guys like you train them what to say and to be co- politically correct and make sure they don't say anything stupid. That's why we have former players that love to come on. <laughs> and they just, they don't like, Ramsey doesn't hold back. Shearhorn doesn't hold back. Because they're not playing hockey anymore. Although, if you try to talk high school hockey with Ramsey, he gets a little circle the way. Because yeah. <laughs> he's he's got that Minnetonka area team, which is kind of like a transfer portal hub. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate. They're no New England prep school, though. Yeah, how about oh, that? Oh, my goodness. That you know what? That's what I still love. I still love social media because I get to see all the fiascos, and I don't have any of the headaches because of them. So <laughs> when I saw you guys chiming in on that, I was just like, "Oh man, I don't miss that at all." Yeah. <laughs> Somebody last year was, I don't know, tweeting at us. They're like, "Who is this Deutsch guy that keeps harassing us?" <laughs> <laughs> was it Arizona State? Maybe were you were you giving Arizona State a hard time? Oh, what was that about? They're like, who is this Deutsch guy? I'm like, if you I feel like they were the putting they the like fork in the locker room. Or something? Yeah, and they made a huge deal about it, with like fork in the locker room, and yeah, if they could have yeah, stormed the remember. court. They would have. I, I, I have. The rink, in, they would have. In my weaker moments, I have had some times where I, I get a little feisty on social media. And... <laughs> Is this when the Laverne copper loggers are flowing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could blame it on <laughs> copper performance uh, limiting drugs, I guess you'd say, but <laughs> it's it's hard to take a step back though, right? Like it's it's part of your life for a decade. Yeah, it I mean, is the, really tough. The um, amount of time you put in a SID is just unfathomable to me. 
even like, you know, uh, it is really nice to have my weekends and, and my nights and all, all this. Uh, but I still just like randomly will pull up the uh, Yahoo Sports app and see if like any of our alums have scored in, in the NHL games that night. And it's just like instinctively do it. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Right. And not to mention like the other teams you you worked with, too. <laughs> like all that other stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, like I mean, it's it's weird. Like how, not just the hockey team, right? Well, it it um, I came to the realization a couple weeks ago that like eventually, all the people that I worked with as as student athletes, eventually they're all going to be done competing. And then like I, I saw a couple days ago, maybe a week ago now, that a uh, guy that ran track, Charlie Lawrence, set the world fifty mile is fifty mile or fifty k world record. It's like, oh my god! Like, it's just so cool to see someone that, like, I I knew he was still competing, but to I didn't know that was a record, for, to be honest. But it was still really cool to see. That job is rather stressful for you, though. SID, I'm. You kind of get dumped on from media, from coaches, from administration, all over the place. How did you last ten years? That's a long um, time for Minnesota. Well, what I think I think the three people that had the job before me had been there for like a total of what six years or something. Um, if that, yes. And it's definitely it's a it's a young person's game now. There's obviously exceptions to that, but Paul uh, Allen, <laughs> yeah, Paul. That was, what a run! Yeah, yeah. Um, it was funny because like when I came in, we were all pretty good friends with the at the time the what the five Division One uh, men's hockey SID is. And I think uh, what PA left like half a year after me, and he was the last one of the five that was still there. Yep. Um, but but you know the it's different because the when I came in I was like 23 years old. I um, mean your podcast had been going for like a year or two is all, <laughs> and uh, you know that's all I had. You know I could I could give all of my time to that. But then as things as you get older and you have other obligations, it's just hard and you know it was hard to be away from my family every weekend even when we played at home um and really there like, late one... night you're yeah, like and, the last and, person leaving the rink yeah yeah, yeah and like i always nice. i always liked uh, you know I, I don't think it was a necessity but i always like to have uh notes turned over for media on saturday instead of just doing one set you do two um and so like i'm sitting there doing notes and that's why you know i love i love our stat guys uh, i don't mean to dump on this but like you know it's tough when you'd have a, a late stat change and not only did it change your story that you're writing for the website but then you got to go back and change all your notes and uh you know that stuff just adds up but it's and you, unbelievable you know that rob experience Sh- you know that rob shiel is presenting vig's uh beer of the week for like almost the entire season now is rob shiel like- is he one of your like nine thousand sponsors now? <laughs> it's hard to tell who's a sponsor and who's just a friend. Who's, of the who's a friend of the show? Friend yeah, of the show. <laughs> I, I, I heard you might be volunteering this weekend though to help them because they're a little shorthanded. How does holiday. how does this stuff get out? I honestly was going to not mention this. What I've got, a I've got world. inside sources everywhere. They hey, much like you guys getting real desperate, uh, they must be real desperate to be asking me to come back and help out with stats. So. SID but, you bullpen. <laughs> You're working. They offered to buy you uh, Maxwell's after after the series. No, you know what? I um, I have to be honest. When I when I asked permission if I could go, it was kind of under the assumption that I would work and then come home pretty quick afterwards. So I don't think that's going to be happening. <laughs> oh, just a firm handshake and that's it. <laughs> Fly by. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to be there this weekend. I'm sad. No. No. Oh, well. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I uh, it's you know what it's been a year and a half since I've even thought about stats. So, well, we last weekend Minnesota the stats, stats completely is... crashed. Yeah, well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Well, happens happens to the best of programs sometimes. Like that, that was some weird things that would come up, and you know, I, I wouldn't put it on any list of like the craziest things that would happen. But like, you do the same thing for twenty games a year. How come some days it just doesn't work? I have no understanding of how that worked. Uh-oh, someone's bringing it up, so I got to pro- no, uh, Speaking oh, of boy. dumping on Deutsch, don't forget Peach dumping beverage on his CPO. Punk-a, is this, is Punk, it could be Tom's. I don't know, maybe Tom's. Tom's <laughs> used to come in and troll us all the time in this thing, but Peach dumped beverage on his computer? 
Okay, do we do do people know this story or no? I'm not familiar with this story. I have to hear. We this. need details. We need details. <laughs> I mean, this is this is just the like insanity of what game night can be like. Uh, and I I don't remember. It was it was definitely under Don still, but uh, we were working up in the press box. Everything was going great, and I want to say like in the middle of the second period, someone accidentally dumped a cup of coffee on the stats computer, and that is basically game over. Like there is the computer was dead. And well, duh, that means yeah. that means no live stats going out. That means TV and radio aren't getting stats. That means the coaches aren't getting stats at the end of the game. And that's probably the biggest fault or you know biggest issue for me. Mm-hmm. But I gotta give our give credit to the student worker who was working for IT. He ran back to the IT office at Beerman, got a new computer, was back before the start of the third period. And I want to say, like, within 20 minutes after the game, they had caught up on everything, and we had stats. Wow. Um, and so, like, that goes from the – at that time, it was Stat Crew. Now they've moved over to a different stat program. But, like, Stat Crew was usually using, uh, like, this DOS program, basically, oh, to just boy. put in – it's a little more simple than coding, but not that much more simple than coding. Like everyone thinks, Oh, Hey, I can, I can do a shot chart. That's easy. But like, there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on to keeping stats for any NCAA event Uh, and and hockey, you know, you guys know hockey. So bang, 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 that it goes really fast. But uh, by the end of the like 15, I don't know if we were done with media yet and we were getting stats from the stack. That's how quickly they got it all fixed up. But they were there late Friday night because it had all <clears throat> crashed and the new system or the new software is beta at best, I would say. Why well, ha- has it changed or is it still um, NCAA it's, live stats? I think it's still NCAA live stats and you will yeah. find out this weekend how crazy it is. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't Go think ahead, it's any worse. I don't think it's any worse. Like I haven't heard the crew complain as much as they did last year. Like they've fixed a lot of the they've cleaned bugs, it up, yes. but it's still not pristine. And I still can't read the face off piece of it. It makes no sense to me. And if it doesn't make sense to me, I feel probably like not alone. wrong with the layout and the design. So wait, did you drink that entire bottle? Let's <laughs> almost. Go. Oh, okay. Let's Never mind. Go. Okay. There we go. What's the line, right? The Someone people have been quoting it all day on Twitter. Jupe's making mistakes. There you go. <laughs> you know that is I I I took it out of some of the intros, but we have to keep it because that's when you were on. Uh, it was awesome. Drew and was I had the, the whiskey, yeah. and I'm feeling it now because you drink a bottle that quickly, it hits you. <laughs> In fact, I think Bart must be watching upstairs because. Rut row. Oh, <laughs> is Jupe going to be awake for Thanksgiving tomorrow? Jupe's roommate's worried. Jupe's roommate's worried. <laughs> Jupe's roommate. <laughs> oh, boy. I love Fox Run. It's good stuff. I'm saving the whiskey for tomorrow. Uh, her brother Nick will be coming over, and Nick and I. You split we'll a poli- bottle. We'll, we might polish off a year, bottle right? and a half of whiskey. He had a bottle of McAllen last year, right? Uh, a couple years ago, we finished off. I got a couple texts on it. What What the heck? Now I've got one of my relatives watching? It's a big show. It's a big show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, it's our 250. Deal, it's 250. Yeah. It's 250. That's, right. That's my nephew. <laughs> the comments are becoming unhinged. <laughs> hey, that's good. Drew, you were saying you're gonna have to jump here. Yeah, yeah, I gotta jump. I do gotta plug my story though. I was I haven't written in a while, but uh, I was writing that was for some good stuff, Minnesota dude. Hockey Magazine, uh, and I talked to the Wethington sisters on the women's team, and uh, absolutely incredible people. I just want everyone watching to or in listening to go read that because uh, I think it's a uh, it's a great story, and I think uh, they're yeah obviously very important to the Gopher Hockey program. Come from a very storied go for hockey family so um that's one thing i just wanted to wanted to say on my way out here but uh, thanks for having me on guys is it gonna be in the magazine that comes out Uh, i don't know if it's gonna be in the print edition i know i'm gonna be writing some more um most of my stuff i think it's just online for right now but i think they might pick and choose to go at a discretion i think so awesome 
Great awesome. article, Drew. Read it today. Thank you. Great women, too. So there yep. you go. Brever. There we go, Drew. <laughs> Brever is the, the GPL lawyer, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I love it. He's I the official it. GPL lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll know who to call then. There yes. go. Thanks for coming on, Drew. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I congrats again on 250. It's amazing. We're still we're still here. Here's to the next 250, right? Thanks, kid. All Have right. a good one. See you guys. See you, Drew. Have a good one. See you, Drew. Oh. Yeah, I'm starting to feel up pretty good here. But that's what the Thanksgiving <laughs> episode is for. Well, I should have asked Drew because he's still part of the younger crowd. But is, was it just Laverne where, like, the night before Thanksgiving is, like, the, the party night? No, it's everywhere. everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah. I talked to the why... current SID, and his plans are not to go home tonight, but to go out on the town a little bit and enjoy oh, being yeah. a young person because it's a young, young person's job, the SID job. Oh. It's a young person's job also to go out on Wednesday night. <clears throat> I am past those days. I got to make a turkey tomorrow. I got to make my stuffing. I got a whole, I got an itinerary. Hey, I'm ready. Hey, that's why we do of... it here. Part of part of you guys having the show, you know, at this time, I got so much work done. Like I got a couple things cooked already for tomorrow. I got the house cleaned up. We're not we're going somewhere, but it's still nice to leave the house clean rather than having it be a disgusting mess. Eric Brever, talk to the new Prague police chief today. <laughs> oh my worst goodness. Worst night of the year. I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> hey, Ken as long B, as he, can be. As long as he doesn't run into Seth Ambrose. It's a good night for us. Oh, <laughs> a lot of DUIs tonight. It's the only person I know from New Prague. I can't see right. <laughs> But here you go. Deutsch is my hero from Ben. Look at that. Still still fan club. Nah, Got to behave somebody in that fan club. <laughs> and and Barb, still... Barbie double rut row. <laughs> oh my... I still have to say one of my favorite moments was at the Frozen Four where the Paul... Or now, who's the USA hockey guy? Again, that runs Fish? the press conference. Yeah. Fish. yeah. Fish, he's just up there. He's like, oh, grump. Deutsch, you're looking kind of grumpy over there. What, what, what's going on, Brian? All right. That was one of the hilarious. And why are people, why are people laughing that all of a sudden? live, I died. Because it, it is almost like he's doing stand-up sometimes between, oh, God. between people. And he's pretty good at it. He, he does the crowd pretty well. But when he, he, kind of he, grumpy. he, uh, he found Grumpy Deutsch, and he just, like, called it out. Well, well, and also, like, you know, you guys know I'm such a behind-the-scenes person. Like, I don't want to be in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, don't want to be I, – I, I love you guys, but, like, I don't want to be on the show because I'm so <laughs> nervous and, you know, whatever. Um, and he is not that way. He is such a uh, well-spoken and, like, presenter uh, personality – and then also, like, I mean, that is that's the worst day for an SID at the Frozen Four <laughs> is that media day. Um, yes, just just because you're doing you're doing a press conference, you're doing locker room media availability, you're doing uh, national TV, you're doing national radio. There's marketing prompts that guys have to do, so you're trying to balance like twenty different things, and nobody else on the team wants to be there. They all want to be focused on the game. Uh, and so, like, you know, that's that wasn't a, a situation that I wanted to be in anyways, being in the spotlight. But it is nice to be also, you know, Fish has always been a good guy about uh, pointing out the hard work that, that people in our job do. And so I, I do appreciate that. I just like, oh, I, I really didn't want to be caught up in front of the media and applauded when half of them probably hate me. <laughs> you know, we grumpy Deutsch was out there as a Twitter handle. We never did it because I you thought put it about out there. it. But then you know we always kind of we always gave you a hard time for it. But you know you're a hockey guy. Um, you kind of get it. Like we said with Pat earlier, we, it's just a thing we give each other a hard time. Right. Um. But I'm well, amazed how long I'm amazed how long you lasted at the U. It is a wow. tough job. Yeah, I think the, I think the, was the, the Don's that, not that easy. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think Vigo was talking during the show that like it's not easy being a Minnesota team, um, and like yeah. there, you know, you guys are spot on with like the stuff you see on social media. Oh my goodness! Oh. And 
you know, it, you're sometimes you can't make everybody happy. And some, you know, the media will want something and the team doesn't want to do it. Team wants to do something. And hey, it's an NCAA rule that we can't do that. And it's just like, okay, it, it does kind of get old being the bad guy. But I don't have to look at social media as an employee anymore. (laughs) This week, I kind of put my foot in my mouth when I gave Russo a hard time for not putting Brock Faber as like the most improved prospect for the wild. All right. And he, and he clapped back at me because I think Minnesota wild Twitter right now is just like completely toxic. Always. And like, he knows me a little bit. And so he was just like, come on, are you clapping back at me too? And I was like, no, dude, it was just kind of tongue in cheek. Like just stand down. I I thought it would be funny, but Twitter, you know, doesn't get that all the time. Hey, sarcasm doesn't exist in social media. No. Yeah. So, unfortunately, Alex, yeah. Do you have a favorite Twitter moment for you or with Pat that that just stands out to you? Like Brian, you're very familiar with anything that blows up when you were working. It's like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Alex, you got any of these? Man, I don't know. If kind of like you said, any any Russo tweet, um, you know, when he clap claps back at people, it's like that's one guy you don't want to get in a you know a tussle with on, on social media. It's like, oh boy, you know, his but, fan base is so quick with the torches, and oh, he's also got haters too who want yeah. to jump in as well. So like, it's if you're crazy. On that, like your phone is done for like a couple right. hours. Yeah, because like, then yeah, it never ends, and nobody will ends. not untag you in in the in the thread. So it's it's crazy. Yeah, I think my favorite was last year. I commented how good the leadership was at Minnesota <laughs> because they weren't basically hazing their freshmen. They're like, you're part of the team, and you know we we aren't going to make you carry bags and pick up pucks after every practice. And you know this is a good thing. I got so much hate for like three weeks or four weeks because I think Bucci retweeted it. Right. And so all of a sudden I'm now in the Bucci world of retweets. It's like, oh my God, these people, I'm not going to get involved, but I see it all. And I can't imagine running a social media team for the Gophers where you see that all the time. Well, the worst is these people that, you know, they have the anonymous accounts. They they don't put their real names on there and then they can just act really tough behind a, you know, a keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Brian, we have another comments on, uh, we have another guest coming Twitter soon, stuff, by the way, you want my comments on Twitter? Well, just like <laughs> how, how tough it is. Like to Facebook see all that course. noise that was, out well, there on Facebook. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, trying to do when we have initiatives and we have fan things and like I was, I was always really proud when our marketing team came up with the rink roots and going out into the communities and, and skating really awesome. with little kids. And it was, it was just awesome to be a part of that. And like, again, that's, that's like a Tuesday night. That's a, that's a rare night that we have off that we're all going out to uh spring Lake park or Edina or Roseville. Um, the so St. Louis Park that, outdoor one was awesome. That was that was yeah. that was a really good one. But that then, like great. the people who get mad, I'm like, "Well, why aren't you coming here?" <laughs> well, because we just started this, and it takes time. Yeah. Um, and then again, like you know, why why don't you go play at the Hippodrome or you know these random rinks? All it's like because there's NCAA rules for where we can go. I don't know if they, right. I completely stay out of this now. I have no idea what's all changed, and Lord knows a lot of it has changed, but. It's like there are, there are rules for what we can do, and even like when when Bob took the guys down to Austin, whatever my last year, and did they where they go last year? Didn't they do something else last year? Did they go to Rochester. Yeah, it's like you just don't understand the like the hoops. And they went up to they jump. went up to like Cloquet and stuff too. Yeah, they went up north too. Because I know they're at Bemidji. Oh yeah, is that up. is that when they went up and met with uh, uh, Mayasich? Was that mm-hmm. the bye week? Yeah, or the yeah. the playoff bye? So. I have, they made I have that, other social things, but let's get your other guest in here. Well, then they made that I'm connection waiting. with Mayasich, and then when Mayasich came to the Frozen Four, like he knew everybody. Yeah, that was pretty was, cool to see him on the plane. Uh, that's awesome. I love that stuff. I think that's so important for a program to do. Is keeping just, the like, alumni all the keep in, that engaged. going. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get Craig Floor. He's trying to figure out how to do this. Oh, I was so I'm so happy for this. I want to talk up Floor. I just sent I just, it hope- to, I just sent them a link. I'm trying to get Floor on. 
I just hope that everybody watching has read all the stories on Craig and the State Fair and Care <laughs> 11 and Fox 9 and the Star no, Tribune. Big media no. star. And the Pioneer every, Press. I mean, every, the only place he's ever gotten he's in trouble. The Craig Floor. The only place he's ever gotten in trouble is when we talk to him about parking on our show. <laughs> no, no, no. Otherwise, no, no, no. he's good. No, no, it was Wait. it was he ripped the basketball team, oh, didn't he? Basketball, yeah, parking and basketball. And we we're pretty we are pretty sure that Rovnak was watching and or something like that. Oh boy, two pretty easy Rovnack. targets. Hey, Rovnack, two pretty easy targets. Yeah. I want to get Rovnak on. That would be so good. He wouldn't say anything though because he's he's a big one. Oh my gosh, there he yeah, is. I think I think Paul. There he is. Hold on, hold on. Whoa. There he is. Chris. Oh, Whoa, I did not. Gentlemen, go for gear. I love it. Hey, I did not. I did not rip the basketball team. I got cut off. See, <laughs> I I was, was I was I here for this? I kind of remember oh, this. Oh, a little bit. It was last year. Oh, then so, it wouldn't have been my problem. So great work. No, it wasn't your issue. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the Craig Floors. Happy, happy, happy birthday this week, Craig. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. birthday. So I feel weird. I, I I really wanted to say this. I had no idea that Craig was going to come on. I'm going to say it, even though he's on the video now. Like I wanted to call out Craig. In 10 years at the Gophers, like Craig is absolutely in the top echelon of people at the U. The number of things that we would go to him for, for needing something done. You know, hey, uh, ESPN's coming to shoot this thing. Can you like make sure no one's working so it can be quiet on the ice? Or uh, I remember like the last year, we really wanted to play up the Big Ten championship game. And so Craig and his staff make this like ridiculous media center to do a post game press conference. And like, I walked in and I was just like, Oh my God, this is incredible for what the, the auxiliary locker room normally looks like. And it's just like, every time you ask Craig to do anything, it just comes out great. Other than, other than tickets for the state fair, but you know, he can't help us out with that. Black Friday deal. <laughs> come up on that, Brian, Black Friday deal. Get your tickets now. Yeah. That's just for admission. We haven't announced any shows yet. So <laughs> So good. I was, well, my daughter had my daughter had a late night practice, so that's why I didn't get on earlier. I wasn't listening. But, so. but y- what you say, Deutsch, is exactly right because we did a show from Mariucci this year, um, over the summer, and Craig got it all set up for us. What well, it was great. even even just like crazy things like we come, we're on the road, and all of our cars are parked at the rink, and we get a snowstorm back in Minneapolis. And and Craig and his staff are out there like clearing off our the staff vehicles so that we can drive home at when we get home at two in the morning. It's amazing. Not to mention, wait. not to mention, like you're you're covering the men's team, you're covering the women's team. Uh, usually, he's got a thousand graduations. He's got all these ice rentals. It's just what we do. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> it's just what we do. That's why that's you're. The that's, Craig Floor. Yeah. That's the difference between having a PR person come on and complain about how tough his job was and, and a facility <laughs> guy like oh, whatever. It's Tuesday, get with it. Yeah. Craig, it's another Tuesday. Uh, I had the pleasure of having a beverage with you after last weekend. Oh, yeah. And how you got your job just, I think, speaks to me the character that's evident when other people work with you. And I think it's just kind of a special thing that I'm grateful that Minnesota has a guy like you running their rink because you were you were kind of handpicked to to do your job. Kind of, you know, I fell into the internship, and then uh, you know, a year and a half later, kind of fell into the job. The guy, the guy that left or put his resignation letter in, he was at the rink today, hanging out with the boys. I think it's just a special thing when you can have people like that who work and you know that that's the attitude that you bring to all the setups and all the hassle that some people might think is just like busy work. Like you take it super seriously and I think it makes the program unique because we come people like you. So try. Neat. Keep telling I keep telling our team, Brian, you gotta ask for more things when they go to the on the road. You know exactly what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> hey, takes another takes drink. A drink. <laughs> overtime. <laughs> Let's go. Second overtime. Yep. Wow. 
Craig, well, let me your tell beer, you. I saw some... week, quick, Craig. Uh, see, there's a green beverage. This is the Saga, the Summit Saga Hazy. Show it to Saga us. Saga Hazy. Show it. That's yeah, where I'll get yeah. in trouble. You're not going to get in trouble. You're... It's Thanksgiving <laughs> weekend, dude. Summit's yeah. Johnson Brothers. They're good. I know. It's all good. Yeah. I just realized I still have the uh, podcast going on my phone from before I joined up. So, probably, <laughs> probably, it probably helps our numbers. Off. Helps our numbers, Deutsch. Keep it He's going. Using up the Wi Fi. Yeah, the pro- propping up the numbers. Yeah, <laughs> propping up our numbers for pull tab. So, appreciate it. <laughs> Unreal, Duke Cannon, Ferda, <laughs> Chip Boys. They, they all like to see that. He's going to be yeah. buying all the products now, too. You're going to see him with an Unreal. Uh, you know, V neck or something. Your pop up ads are all going to be GPL ads now. It's going to be. Do you great. want? Do you want me to plug one of your sponsors? Because <laughs> in the in the greatness that is this late show time, I told you got a bunch of work done. I got a little session on the elliptical, and then uh, right about the time the show started, I, I hopped in the shower, and you guys were pumping uh, Duke Cannon. Man, I got I got that big brick of soap. I don't know what kind it is, but that thing lasts for like a month. It's crazy. Did you get you a go. hardware store or a Target? Um, I want to say I got it at, I think my mom got it for me at Shields, but man, you do see it. They're take, they take over. They're everywhere. I I definitely have seen them at Fleet Farm. I'm a big Fleet Farm guy now. We got, we got chickens in the backyard. We got to take care of Fleet Farm trips. Chickens? (laughs) What? Oh man. Oh yeah. We finally got eggs. Deutsch and uh, Jim Harbaugh (laughs) there. And you come in with your t-shirt and just have a big glass of milk and just like never compare me with someone who went to Michigan. <laughs> oh. oh no. All right. Your thoughts on Robert Morris making their return. So I had pegged that I when I saw that on the schedule, I was saying saying that's probably gonna be the one that we come to. And I really would like my, you know, when I left, my son had come to a couple games, but he hadn't he didn't know what hockey was. He just you know, too young, yeah. Bunch, bunch of people running into each other on the ice. That's cool. So I think that is really cool to come back and uh, be able to see them. Um, and obviously, that was kind of my first. Uh, I, I after college, I did the internship at Minnesota, and then I went out and did work with uh, Coach Schooley for a year, and then obviously the Minnesota job came open, so I came back home. Uh, but it is really cool how hard all of those people worked to bring those programs back. Um, and it goes from, you know, Logan, the women's coach, Schooley, the men's coach. Uh, those guys stayed in the fight. They could have left, but to see them uh, and, and other people too, not, not even just like coaches, but pe- just random supporters of the program that fought and, and donated money and their time and, and how much work they're doing now to kind of uh, get that program back on track. It is, it is really cool. So I'm really happy for them. Um, you know, I, I was really afraid when we played them in 2014. Uh, <laughs> didn't want to lose to them. I got to say, I still hope we don't lose to them, but uh, it will be cool to see uh, a lot of those guys again too. So. What's, what's Derek like to work with? I've enjoyed him on the USCHO podcast. He's awesome. Um, I met him at the frozen four and I maybe got a little too comfortable with him for his comfort, but uh, he seemed like a guy I could have a uh, Tito's and soda with and talk. Uh, what was he like back then? Well, it was, you know, I had, I had, uh, I had worked with the football staff here at Minnesota my senior year. And then I had a couple sports as an intern here at Minnesota, but that was like my first taste. Uh, and I, I should say that I covered the the Gopher hockey team at the daily for two years. So like I had been around division one men's hockey, but like it's an eye opening experience when you're inside like that. And then it also, you know, I, I don't mean to diminish it, but it's, it's different out there than it is here. And just in terms of exposure, um, the day-to-day work of the athletic department. Um, but I give him so much credit for like taking me under his wing. I didn't know a soul when I'm, I didn't know where Pittsburgh was when I moved out. There. <laughs> I was, I, I was under the impression that like, Oh, I'm on the East coast. Uh, everything's two hours away. I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to go to DC. It's like, Oh no, no. Pittsburgh is not anywhere close to any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he really took me under his wings and kind of, helped me get my feet under me as a division one SID for hockey. 
Um, and, and, you know, like anything, I'm sure we, I know, I know we had bumps in the road for like things I screwed up and things like when, when you're new, you just don't know the, what I would call now like a, uh, communications calendar of like, Hey, this is when this needs to be done. This is when, you know, this, this day of the week is when conference awards need to be submitted. And so like when that stuff happened, he never like treated me like, Oh, you're just a dumb kid. He was always very respectful. And then, like I said, too, like I didn't know anyone out there. So like he made sure I had a place to go for Thanksgiving Uh, in the summer. Like we, he did, he had, he invited me to things and it was just really nice of like being treated as an adult when I actually was still a pretty young kid. I think I remember you in the scrums after games at Mariucci when you were at the daily. Yeah. Yeah, I was there, what, um, 07, 08, 08, 09, I think? Ooh. That was the Fiona era when the, the Don would just... <laughs> oh, boy. The, the oh Don boy. would just give the biggest eye roll after every question she asked. <laughs> the flashbacks. Hey. We got to give a lot of credit to Bruce Brothers with the Pioneer Press for uh, oh, falling, on, falling on the sword, good or bad. He was always going to ask the first question, and man, a lot of times he had to he had to eat yeah. dirt when he did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So uh, I think that was about the time that I started to maybe do some GPL stuff, but I don't think I did availability. I did a couple of post games right. and stuff. Like I remember going down to Mankato when Tony Lucia got concussed and we, we brought out Don really late and he was not in the mood to talk. And I remember like saying, Hey, uh, what are you gonna do for your lineup tomorrow? He's like, I'm thinking about it as he walks away. Oh yeah. (laughs) I was just like, "Eh, good first impression for Don, you know, because GPL was still kind of in its younger days back then trying to find our feet. Were you there for the strict era? Yeah, actually, <laughs> because we, no, because we were in Mankato, and poor Jim Strick, he was just Don just ran over him, and he was pissed. It was a Mankato at Mankato, and they lost. Well, his kid got concussed. Like it was He's a like, bad. I don't, want, a dirty I don't game. want. I don't want you saying anything. I don't want. I don't want you. I don't want anyone talking to me. Don't, don't want anything. And Strick just like we've already had people talk, and yeah. oh, yeah. The look he gave, poor Jim Strick. Oh, Jim yeah, Strick is. He, I'm surprised Jim Strick didn't just get scare you off because he was not treated well at the U. Unfortunately, and, and he was such a great guy. Yeah, Jim's a good guy. Oh, such a great yeah, guy. I I always remember my my first time games covering the team were Jim's first games staffing the team. And it was the icebreaker at Excel. <laughs> and that was the weekend that Ryan Stoa got hurt, which is irrelevant to the story. But I just remember going down to the locker room asking, oh, can I talk to this guy? Or I don't know who it was. Can I talk to somebody? Mm-hmm. And Jim's reaction was just like, well, this is like my first game. And I don't know who any <laughs> people are. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw we saw Stoa going out on, on crutches that night underneath. But that's that's not something we talk about. You know, we see so many things behind the scenes as just observers that you really don't talk about unless the team has talked about it. Right. I mean, you see a lot of practice goalie, Bryant, right? Like you guys knew about that and nobody knew about that. Who? Yeah. I mean, you want to, you want to respect what the coaches are saying when you ask a direct question. If I ask a direct question about, the goaltending at UMD and Scott Sandlin says, I don't know, or I don't want to talk about it. I know you're lying in my face, but I know, (laughs) but I'm not going to print that until after the fact, or like if I see somebody get hurt in practice, I know I'm getting access to watch practice because they're letting me watch practice. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say who gets hurt and stuff unless I ask the coach a question and he says, this player got hurt. Or like when the power play changes and all of a sudden we've got Pitlick and Snugger working off the goal line instead of the top of the circle. I liked it. I thought that was awesome. And then when I saw it against Ardame, I was like, oh my God, Bob, I sign off on this, you know, 
he doesn't care. He liked my practice plan today for my squirts, but at the same time, he did. He okay, did. We got, we got a Craig Floor question. Can we talk about the new lights and the glare on TV? Is there a fix or is this the new normal? Oh, I want to say, Craig Floor, the lights have been adjusted a bit already because I've noticed that it looks jump. great. I I think it looks great. We're getting there. <clears throat> it's the TV part. So I want to say, be there in person. You don't see what they're seeing on TV. Correct. Amen. Right. Thank right. you. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> buy buy um, a ticket. You don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah. yes. But uh, it, we're still working on that. We're still trying to see what they can do and and uh, re aiming you know, and, and going. We've seen it for ages, like in Denver and and well, Grand Forks. It's just it's just the angle. It just yeah. And when I when I talk to the, the TV producers that do the Wild and all the NHL games and all these other places, it's like it TV grabs that more than when you see it in person. So it, it's tough. And um, it's hard to, hard to deal with, and it's such a fast game when it's moving back and forth. They can't shade it the right way uh, to get rid of that. But we're still trying to uh, ask them to change that up a little bit. And, and Craig, do you have any good Deutsch choice stories for us? I don't have any dirt on Brian. I was ah, say, remember remember how true. I had a heartfelt praising for of you when you came I know. So. he just was so nice to me a little bit ago like, how can I throw him under the bus? can't follow up there after that <laughs> I mean, the worst thing i would say is the shit i put up with and dealt with with no it's getting <laughs> hey um this is happening in five minutes can you please help yeah so so Deutsche, i literally just sent craig a text I'm like dude i just sent him the link for Streamyard, and he was on within five minutes that's how good. On, That's Craig, on quicker. Craig, I would have been on quicker, quicker, but I was still driving from a hockey practice, late night hockey practice. <laughs> I barely made it. I had a seven forty five practice yeah. or six forty five to seven forty five practice. I did eight thirty for Pat, and I got yeah. eight thirty one. Yeah, I tried. What, a, Alex, what time did you dad go to bed? I know he goes to bed at like eight, like like eight thirty. That's normally when he goes. It's crazy. I don't. How know. does he do the wild when they play on the road and he does fan line? Does he? Do it's a, a struggle. Nap? It's Is a he really grumpy? struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. But, but so does he? Does he have to go in or does he do that from home? I don't. I honestly don't follow in. that closely. Goes in the um the studio is right in St. Louis Park. So um yeah you know, he goes <laughs> from Egan to to St. Oh, Louis God. Park. Yeah, yeah. It's... Do you drive him for that one or no? <laughs> I usually go with him just because I live right down the street from K Fan, so it's it's fun. It's you know it's fun to be there. But yeah, he's he, very tired the next day for sure. Any adjustments for the plexiglass, Craig? Jeez. Well, it's not it's not tempered glass, so it's plexiglass. You're gonna. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that changes at all. So. Sit in the same it's location not, at the action. I don't like that the photo good. holes are just slightly smaller. Smaller, yeah. They're a little tight. <laughs> Craig, is it the same as at the X? Like, is it the same setup, basically, for the glass or no? Uh, no? Essentially, yeah. I mean, it's a different company, but it's essentially not the not the photo holes, too. But... No, the angles are weird. When you look at an angle, it's tough to look through that glass. Yeah. But it's is it the say. same at Excel, though? I don't know. Like, yeah. Oh boy, I know. Any ice in there? Wait, juke making mistakes, right, Bees? Well, I gave you that bottle, so I don't think it's a mistake. It's a I'm taking advantage. Yeah, Bees gave this to me in Grand Forks. Wow, it's got a lot of miles on it. <laughs> and and Grand Forks, they do a great job. You know, we don't like their team, but the people they got behind the scenes are some great people. Um, I don't know. Anyone else maybe, agrees? Maybe if Eric Martinson was in charge of the rules committee earlier, Jackson Nelson's high stick penalty would have counted <laughs> because he's pushing for that. He used to be the rule. He specifically talked about that when we were in Grand Forks. He's like, well, you know, one rule change I would like to change is the crossbar is not really the rule that we should be using. We should be using the shoulders. And when you're six four, six eight, and skates like Jackson Nelson, his shoulders are like a foot above the crossbar at least. So more than that, yeah. Yeah. Hey Craig, when uh when you uh when the ice changes were made, was was there any arena that you tried to model it after or like any no. other schools? Okay. No, not really. I mean, you know, Mariucci originally right. was built basically after kind of that concept of Mun Arena at Michigan mm -hmm. State, which was built in the seventies as far as that open concourse and everything else, although we have a 
heck of a lot more seats than Mon Arena. But right. as far as what we did to get it down to 89 feet, it was what would fit, what's not going to impact the sight lines, what's going to be the best that we can fit um, without looking stupid. Right. Okay. You know, uh, <laughs> we've all seen the junior ranks and the other places that are multi-play, multi-use places that mm-hmm. you just, what are all those, you know, the first rows like eight feet up and right. really weird corners and that kind of stuff. And we just wanted to make sure that none of that was going to be in, in as little impact as possible with what you could see. I personally love it as a photographer because you've got holes in three of the four corners now. There's more room down there for us loser photographers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that, that the, is kind of cool. There really, wasn't, there really wasn't any. It was tight before unless you yeah. were along you know, the penalty box yeah. site. But if you go on the other side, section two and whatever, yeah. it is much better to shoot from now. Well, and you're not, you don't feel like you're in, fr- in front of somebody when you're sitting Correct. over there on that far end. <laughs> where before, you're either sitting in somebody's seat or. I never like even there. tried to shoot from over there just for that it was reason. Weird. I always liked when visiting TV would come in and want to, you know, every once in a while, they want to put a camera down there. I'm like, okay, this is back in the day where like, uh, every seat is sold. I don't know how I can strike a season ticket holder at this point for you. How's it going to work? I miss Pajon in the photo box. Yeah. He he might be working the game on Friday. I can't remember if I saw his name. Dang. I don't think he's in the photo box. He doesn't want no, to. No, he doesn't. Any... He works the corner now, but. Yeah. He takes I was I was there for his last game when he got hit. And he's like, that's. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Also, uh, Craig, uh, what goes through your mind? Like, remember last season, the Logan Cooley hit where the glass breaks? Uh, just, yeah, that was that was a crazy moment. And one of my most viewed videos on Twitter was <laughs> Craig running, running across. <laughs> it was the fastest glass change I think I've ever seen in a hockey game. Like, just, I'm not kidding. Just had it at six and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> from when from when play stopped to when we started play again was six and a half minutes. All so I know we is pride it, ourselves on that. I really feel bad for the woman that got hit. Right, that was scary. Well, yeah. A lot of a lot with of a big glass one on her that didn't break up. But uh, but yeah, otherwise it was crazy. Uh, yeah, it's it was our worst nightmare. We're you right. Know, you asked about the plexiglass and it's curvy or they're you know it's not as easy to see through, but. Guess what? That ain't gonna break like that. <laughs> so we're a little happier with that right now. But and we had we did have one season, Alex, where we had four pieces break during warm-ups, different warm-ups <laughs> all through the season. Wow. The last one we got down to it was four and a half minutes to get it replaced. Wow. <laughs> that was that was when I was there, right? I kind of remember that. Right. I think so. It's like when you first started, but it was all the warm-up ones. Oh you know, it was all during warm-ups, it would hit just wrong on an eight foot piece and always on the gopher end not down by the zamboni all the way down to the other end so we have to <laughs> fly down Go all the way across it. yeah and that's some thick glass too it was five eight yeah five ace four yes. by eight sheets huge heavy do you do you practice that before the year starts so your crew knows what to do or is not, it just like not with all the students and that kind of stuff i mean adam my lead ice maker he the Most Olympian. And he's an Olymp- he's and- an Olympian, so he knows what to do. Yeah, right? he's an Olympian. Yeah, <laughs> um, there's a lot of a lot of thought through that first, and that's why you know the, the last one we did and and Biggs your your video that was so viral everybody saw it um, was uh, him. All I was doing for him, and I'd run down there. I'm like, "What do you need?" And he said, "I need this," and that's me going back and forth, and that was all it was, you know, because he's like, "I forgot that," but I knew exactly what he needed. Where does that glass come from? Is it not? Is it way out of state, or is it? Uh, it every piece is custom made because it's tempered okay. glass. So you got to size it and right. and make it. So it might come out of Canada. It might come out of the U.S. It okay. all depends. So, what happens if it happens uh, now? Do you have replacements? Yeah, yeah, but it just, it just won't shatter like True. that is. It'll just crack and have a big crack in it. But we have a piece <laughs> for every size that's there. We'll do the same thing. First one might not be six and a half minutes, but <laughs> we're hoping, knock on wood, that we don't ever have that. So, right, you know. Oh. 
It drinks Craig, it. have you ever had a hydraulic leak at Mariucci where the Zamboni breaks and it spills out fluid on the ice? Yeah, not during a game, though. But yeah, yeah during oh a game. It was, I thought uh, you had an ice, right you before, had an I mean, ice problem, though, one time, didn't you? Well, yeah, way back in the day. That was Marnie Gellner's first game ever working for Fox. Mm-hmm. And we had a hole right by the Zamboni area. Mm-hmm. Took, we had a 45 minute delay. <laughs> Worst night of my life. <laughs> I, bet, I bet that went over well. Went great. Yeah. Well, it was fine. It was, you know, it is what it is. The worst part was we sent the cheerleaders out to throw t-shirts just to occupy people. And and in 30 seconds, every all the t-shirts are gone. Threw out. I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't drag this out. You know, a lot <laughs> of it is <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. around. Wow. Throw a couple of fakes out there. Like, <laughs> let's play this like PJ Fleck would play it. Let's like slow everything down, get the maximum <laughs> oh, amount geez. of time out of these t shirts. <laughs> yeah. Am I the only one who's never broken here? a piece Come of on, glass? Deutsch, are you going uh, beverage number two? Are you going to do no, it? No, no, no. Stick around? I'm one and done. Yeah. One and done? One no. and done. You're like uh, Eric Johnson, huh? Oh, hockey. Yes, yeah, Stanley Cup oh. champion. <laughs> He's a champion. Yeah, so champions you want, however, you want to compare me to Eric Johnson, I'm totally fine with. So, wow. I can't wait for you to tear your ACL at a golf oh, cart out in. Oh, golf think, cart. Oh, boy. I think I lived in the same dorm as him his freshman year. I think we were freshmen together. Is there a daily story about your dorm? Uh, no, no. <laughs> That would have been a good story. I'm yeah. just saying, like in hindsight. You know what though? I, I and and uh, when Drew was on, we were talking. Like I, Drew was a really good reporter. And uh, when I was, when I was with the team, we were lucky. We had a lot of good daily reporters. Um, but I did want to, like one thing I always appreciated about the daily, and it, this has nothing to do with EJ. And I'm not going to name names, but like I remember walking through the dorm my freshman year and seeing some student athletes that were getting written up. Uh, which just meant, you know, for people that don't know, is just literally you were drinking in the dorm and you were clearly yeah. underage. And I had called uh, my editor and said, like, hey, this is happening. Like, is this news? And it was straight up, hey, we wouldn't write that story about any other college kid. We're not going to write it about a student athlete. So I always thought they had really good ethics and uh, standards for what uh, what went into, what got published and what didn't. And Fox 9 didn't have that same feeling with uh, <laughs> Jeff Brazy and Long Island. Again, wasn't doing anything that every other college kid at the Ex- university right. did. Exactly. We, I, I, I had Thomas Vanek. You see all these guys. They all were out there. Brian, did you like my ethics when there was a situation with one of the teams you were the SID for mm-hmm. where a legal situation came up that was not a real issue? But I told it to you and Don before anyone else knew about it. You ruined Game of Thrones, man. You ruined <laughs> Game of Thrones. It's like, hey, by the way, um, you're you should know about this, and your coach should know about this. I don't think it's an issue based on what I know of the situation, <laughs> but something's happening in the Minneapolis police community that you should be on top of. We we were at our neighbors watching. I don't. I, it must have been like the second to last. Was season. it like the red wedding episode or something? No, no, it would have been later dramatic. on than that. But it was okay. it was like a very important episode, and this came through, and I lost my mind. Like my neighbors must have thought I was insane. <laughs> I left. Like I just. I mean, they're next door, but like I literally just left. I'm like, I gotta go. This like. Yeah, that was, there, there was a situation that came up where I was the first one to know in the Gopher hockey uh, room. Yeah, you were very much the first person to know. <laughs> Don didn't know at the time. Yeah. So. But without getting into it, it was not nearly as big of an issue as what it originally looked like. Yeah, it was something super minor. It was just something that got escalated way too quickly. It was not a real deal. It was just like, if... You had somebody who was overzealous like a Jason Gonzalez. It might have been a different. Jason Gonzalez and Don Lucia were fun. Like it was just like must see press conference. 
<laughs> like every day. Like, oh come on, what is, is Jason? Good? What are, what are Jason and Don going to get into today? No, no, no. What about Jess and Bob though? Come on, Jess and Bob are fun. I think they they <laughs> both understand each other. <laughs> Brian, how do you handle uh, the conflicts between uh, media and coach? And oh, players and, and just media. Be a, just be a punching bag. Oh, you know who was also fun? Dan Dan Myers and Don. When they did the underage thing, where like if you go play three years of juniors, maybe you only get three years of college, <laughs> just like football. <laughs> Dan and Don had a fun Donnie Brook over that <laughs> yeah. conversation. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I see it. Like, do we want 25 and 26 year olds playing college hockey? They should probably be playing in the ECHL if they want to keep playing. Right? But, but, but you're get money. Yeah. Hey, like I don't I don't want to say that you're remembering things incorrectly, but that's not my memory of that that uh incident. That was um Don and they, Dan. Yeah, Don and Dan. That like yeah. the story had come out and Don and Minnesota got blamed for everything in the story. And then after the fact, the outlet that reported it was like, oh, hey, we'd love to talk to Don. It's like, after the fact? No, we're not talking to you. <laughs> and so we basically said no. And we had an availability and they had Dan come down and talk, uh, do the, you know, try to interview them uh, at, you know, for them. Usual and availability. During the regular yeah. media. Yeah. And, and my recollection of that is that it was a, I mean, obviously Don wasn't thrilled, but Don, they had a decent conversation about it. Don definitely was like, I have my perspective and I'm willing to have a conversation about it and respect your questions. Don, I thought was very poised as he always was. Like you almost felt like every time Don went to a media availability, he had cue cards that he would rehearsed with Joyce. He it was like, I get this question. <laughs> I've got this answer. I've got this question. I've got this answer. And I'm going to use the same answer for three or four media interactions in a week. Like he was just so polished. It's like, that's your perfect, like Notre Dame 4.0 student. Who's just like, I'm ready. I, I'm not going to go off the rails. I'm always going to stick to my script. And I don't care what questions you ask. I'm going to stay on message and this is my perspective. The uh, it's not combative. Yeah, the he, oh he you know I never was worried about what's Don going to say. That was very reassuring for me of like oh you know he he has a lot of things he's worried about but I don't ever have to worry about him misspeaking. And the one thing that he always was uh, I thought was really good at, and I'm sure it drove media members crazy was you could ask him a question that he didn't want to answer to. And he would talk for three minutes and give you something, but not answer your question at all. Like a politician. Yeah. Bob, on the other hand, you never know what he's going to say, which is always fun. <laughs> you never know what fight he's going to start with Jess Myers during no. the availability. It's, it's just, it's hilarious. are you crazy? Are you crazy? Walker out for disciplinary reasons? Are you crazy? Oh, that was a tough one. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> I mean, Bob and Don are totally different. You know, Don is like, you're smarter than you look. Thanks for the backhanded compliment, Don. But I guess you think I'm smart. I don't know. And Bob, you know, he's like, you know, you get it. You, you figure it out. Walker and injury, you disciplinary, or anything like that. Just curious. Are you, are you crazy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Can you go? The, uh, it seems like the number one team in the country gets knocked off the next week. You, you might go to number one now you get the weekend off, so maybe you can avoid that or you thought about that? Well, we're really excited. We're really excited about that. He says sarcastically. I'm, I'm only talking to Jess Myers right there. Okay? <laughs> I'm talking to nobody else. All right. <laughs> While Bob's looking at me saying this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. I'm so glad I had those. I got a go. I got a couple audio things. I got. Chopped the head for Harry. Now up to yeah, Kessel. Hell. She's My here favorite. on one with Oligoski. Kessel down. down the lap. Going in. He shoots. his goal. Take that, you stinking badgers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, what a classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, availability was fun today. Like, Jess is in Arizona, and it's just me, Wally, Frank, and the Fox 9 guy doing the camera. And I'm just like, did not expect this today. Okay, I guess I have to ask all the questions. You did so, it first. Someone else did chime in later. The Fox 9 guy chimed in at one point okay. to get something for his broadcast. Um, but that's always kind of awkward when you're just like, okay, well, we're the doing main availability. Person. And there's like five people here or six people here, and no one's gonna ask a question except for me. The you know what I missed though? Frosty? I, okay, but, okay. I told Frosty, Frosty came in after. Like they're doing this thing now where they do men hockey and then women's hockey, and Frosty came in and he was talking to Frank and Wally, and I was like, No, Brad, uh I'm probably not the right person to ask you questions today. I would love to just like prompt you, but I'm not gonna be able to do the job. I, I'm busy with my mite hockey, my squirt hockey, my Thanksgiving dinner, my gopher puck live stuff. I just don't have the time. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. So he's like, I get it. I love that they're doing that, by the way. Like we, it's have, great. we always we always wanted to and always tried to, and we just could never get the timing to work out. But no. Well, now that you don't have to have the two rinks when the two teams are playing on NHL, it should work out easier. I know the guys just love just – not having to go to Ritter for practice. There's like that walk is so painful. Lee, Lee and Jeff probably love it too. <laughs> well, yeah, even more so. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you know what I really miss? Uh, the media availability after the Viking season ends where Don would walk in and it'd be a packed house. And you'd be like, oh, the Viking season must be over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. It's always tough to walk into availability, though, and you're like the only person who's for sure going to ask questions. It's like, know. oh, Jesus, really? I, I I didn't even know Ryan Chesley was coming in today. Like, that, Wait, so, idea, that Scott Slarks didn't tell me who was coming in. So, so, so Frank and like, Wally, they just show up and observe. They don't, no one, I, they don't, they'll ask every, questions once in a while. Every once in a while, they'll ask questions, but, but they're like, not driving the interview. Yeah, and, and, and they're taking time before and after to grab individuals to do stuff oh, okay. for the radio show or yeah. for the broadcast on Friday and Saturday. Makes sense. And they're always doing that in the hallway or right. something. Because they're recording that for intermissions. Okay. Like the intermission stuff for the radio broadcasts are done at availability on Wednesday. So it's a little out of date. And then, and then, like in their mind, I'm speaking for them, obviously. Right. Uh, like in their mind, they're going to talk to Bob before both games. So, like, they're already going to get more information later on in the week. So, it's like, okay, right. we'll listen to it if we can be there. But, like, it's not that big a deal. Mm-hmm. So, I got in trouble once because I told someone that Jess Myers has, like, a checklist Uh-oh. of questions to ask. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Up here. I got confronted at Maxwell's oh, yeah. about that. He thought <laughs> I it was me. There. I wasn't there. I'm, I'm 6'3", 270. So, some people, you know hold their comments till later. But anyway, (laughs) Jess has stories that he's writing. And so he asks questions for his stories. And I get that. He's a professional. He's writing for the rink live. That's his job. So if he's writing a story on the rink size, or if he's writing a story on matchup against Michigan state, or if he's asking a question about, you know, recruiting, like he has questions he has to ask and we have seven, eight minutes to talk to the coach. He's got to get those in. And I made a comment on one of our podcasts, I think, where I said, overtime probably. I don't have these restrictions. I can just get into almost a conversation during that eight minutes where I can ask a question, a follow-up, maybe take it on a tangent or I hear a question asked and I can take it deeper because that's interesting to me. And man, I got some feedback from a professional reporter to that apparently got misdirected at Jupe. I just want to get along. And so when we have these sessions, I want him to go first. I want him to like ask his questions. Like I want him to like be able to write his stories. Like he's a professional and the people that subscribe to places that publish rink live stuff, I want them to get that. We're different. Go for Buck Live is a community of niche people. This podcast is awesome. We've got 53 people listening. What is it? Still, well, but like 10 11? of those are just all my devices. So, 
Thank you for doing that. I hope Craig and Alex got the memo yep. that you have to have four devices <laughs> streaming if you're going to come on. To I've got our two iPads going. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I'm just kidding. Both TV, TV. Is, you got it simulcast. What? what? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. V. I'm just saying it's like he's got a different mission than I do. It's like I'm covering the season as a whole, and I just wish that, you know, it's getting better with Bob where we're getting to understand each other and he understands me and he understands what I'm trying to do. And I understand where his lines are. That's just part of the gig. And like Brian and Craig, like you totally get it with me. I think Um, I hope Scott is as well. Scott Slarks is the new SID. I think he gets where I'm coming from. It's like, this is a different niche. Like so many people who follow us and listen to our podcast, like they just want to know, like they're not, the negative fan base that's on Facebook. Like we get some people on Facebook, I think that follow us, but most of our people are just like, yeah, we want to see what's going on and we care. And so I'm trying to provide that. And so my questions, I try to build on things and, and provide some insight to people. Um, maybe that's just the, the bourbon County and the company that we have right now. Well, that's, that's one thing about media availability. It was always tough is like, everybody wants their piece of the pie and like, you know, credit, credit to all the people that come out. I, you know, I wouldn't have had a job if we didn't have media that came out to cover the teams, but it also is tif- difficult of like, okay, Bob can't do a one-on-one with five different people every single week. And so sometimes like you're only going to get one or two questions, make them count. And if you're a media member, you should almost always try to get that second question. If, if Bob doesn't answer it the way you want, don't just be okay with, okay, that's my story. Got it. Ask just one more question before moving on to the next thing. I was talking about this with Brad Schlossman when we were up in Grand Forks because he gets that. Like, he's the guy up there. Like, he mm-hmm. gets like a six-minute interview back and forth with the head coach. You know, is it going to be Brad Barry forever? Eh, we'll see. He's doing pretty well this year. <laughs> but he he establishes that rapport where <laughs> he's he yeah. is right now. He almost got fired last year. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fans wanted him gone. Sandlin went through the same thing in Duluth. Like they wanted him fired, and then he wanted a dance championship, and then another one. You know, our fans are so rabid about the moment. Helps to have a little consistency. No, do you guys remember? Do you remember when uh, uh, UMD and Sandy got so bent out of shape about uh, the Matt Duluth Wellens? News? Yeah, well, it, well, it's, no, 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 it's not Matt Wellens. No, it was. Not, wait, wait, though, no, it Scott was. Scott wouldn't that, answer his questions. Scott me, was like, "Hey, do you want to tell the story?" <laughs> <laughs> My understanding of this was their their gripe was that the headline was "Where has Scott Perunovich gone?" Which Matt Wellens doesn't, to my knowledge, Matt Wellens doesn't write the headlines of the Duluth News Tribune. Maybe I'm wrong. But, like, the article itself was fairly even for a guy that ended up, was that the year he won the Hobie Baker? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out okay for him, I guess. But, so, they... Uh, Turns out they, Scott Sandlin knows what he's doing. They, they, uh, they refused to answer questions from the Duluth News Tribune, so then they had post-game availability where it was just the SID staff asking questions. <laughs> Brilliant. We lost our host. Got oh. better things to do. He's moved to the couch. <laughs> I don't know. This what? is like, it's like I, GPL podcast super overtime because we started early. Nice. I, I went to go click something and all of a sudden I was out. <laughs> No, I think Scott and Matt have their issues. For whatever reason, some of these Rink Live reporters and their coaches <laughs> have friction. Jess and Bob, Matt and Scott. Uh, Brad seems to do okay up in North Dakota. He figures it out. Well, we issue. were there for him and Schloss. And Schloss literally holds the microphone. Until he's, he's not giving gone. it up, he's not he giving does it up. Not give up the microphone because they have a microphone that they pass around. It was it was Schlossman goon, goon next right. to him. 
it's all it's always else. those two up there. Yeah, and and Schloss just he literally just leans over and just asks question after question after question. It was solid. I got a great photo of it actually with you and Jess just kind of waiting off on the side. Well, I think when you get a visiting coach, uh, you're just grateful that they're waiting for you a little bit. Mm-hmm. There are some coaches that are better that than others. Like they'll just some old one just go. It's like they're some SIDs lost. too. <laughs> like they lose, and they're just like, "Oh, you're not here waiting for us." Yeah, we did our availability. We're gone. I was I always just absolutely hated that when we would you guys would be out talking to the visiting team. And like our our people would be walking in. And it's just like, guys, get o- get over here now, get over here. I just I like it when we get to the formats where we get uh, one room where you talk to co- both coaches because it's hard. Like yeah. you just have you want to hear from the other coaches. Like I can't wait for Derek Schooley to come to Mariucci and talk to him after hanging out with him in Tampa. And just be like, hey, I've got some questions about your team. Uh, we know each other a little bit. Let's chat. I hope he doesn't just like take off. Who knows? I hope I hope you get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer I wanted to hear, Brian. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ditch Bob one night so I can just like hang out, wait for Derek, just catch up and be like, hey, hey, I'm, uh, I'm- Maxwell's Maxwell's uh I'll be there at eleven thirty. I obviously it's been a it's been a cup of coffee since I've been out in Pittsburgh, but I'm pretty sure week of that game, if you really wanted to talk to Derek Schooley, he, he'd find time for you. Wow, well, so I I I like I mean, what he, Derek's he, he's he is a disciple of Frank Saratori. And, <laughs> and he's I a think, talker. I, I think that speaks for itself. Well he's a, I mean he's a talker. Like <laughs> if you ask him a question, he's gonna give you a real answer. Uh, that's why he's great on the USHO podcast. If anyone who listens to us wants to add another one to their list, that's a great one because he gives the perspective of a coach that's not selfish. You know, he brings out like what are real college hockey issues and maybe it's from the Robert Morris perspective, but it's not totally out of the realm. I feel like there's a lot of Eastern coaches that just do not get it. Like they do not get the landscape of the entire 64 teams right now. It's like, what's best for college hockey? I think Derek is on board yeah. with that. So we need more of that in the world where we're not just, I just read this thing in the wall street journal the other day. It was tough. People need Craig, to get like, back to society. So why can't we have Jen floor? She's not sleeping side. with the rink manager at this moment. So <laughs> no, she's not. The best yeah. joke of all time. You yeah, are, yeah, that, is. that was that was her teammate that said that, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with that until you retire, Craig, and maybe at your no. retirement roast, I will bring it up. It, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much if we ever get there, everybody's already heard that story already. So they'll more, all laugh. More fun for it, yeah. Yeah, everyone will get the joke. Oh, I am so drunk. <laughs> it's good that you're running the show, Jube. I, I appreciate this. I, I'm <laughs> happy that we've got Alex, yes. Brian, Craig all on here. Uh, college hockey is unique, I think, yes. in the world of sports. And it's a fun group to have. And uh, yeah, like Brian, like you and I became pretty good friends when you were doing your job, I think. Like we respected each other's boundaries of what we could do and what we could share and what's going on. I think you were always worried if you told me anything, Don. <laughs> like, oh my God, you told Vigo that. <laughs> and you made uh, what I was doing difficult. And Craig, like you're always just like, yeah, this is what we're doing. Like you, you know, from the region stock or whatever. I'm just confirming that. That's the way we are. I will say when you guys were asking about players not liking you, I have I had way more complaints from people within the U who hated you, Vigo. Uh, hate hates a strong word. I just shouldn't say hate, but for uh, he's just like I feed off your hatred. Yeah, I'm um, sharing the, public information. Or? Uh, yeah, no, it, 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 that it was it. The request that. things. 
Yeah, it, it, what what DPAs and then like the Board of Regents stuff of like, oh, it's he, how does he know this? It's like because he's smart. Like he knows where to find these things. <laughs> it asks properly and correctly and gets the info. Yeah, like just the other day, I did um, Freedom of Information Act requests for, for all the, the schedule, scheduling right? stuff. Yeah. yeah, for the schedule. Yeah, I, 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 the loop you're, 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 this is one thing that was always tough. Of like, you're absolutely well within your rights to do that. It, we have, to, and it's news. I don't want to give you that information. I'm a little frustrated that the Bob Motzko extension wasn't on the Regents' agenda today when they were talking to Fairview. Because they signed an agreement with Fairview talking about the hospitals. Bob's contract should have been on that agenda. And if it was, I would have known about it. And at availability today, I could have asked him about it. But for them to hide it behind everything and not release it and just do it with a press release that I think Randy Johnson got before I got, I'm like, come on. I don't know. I I mean, gotta, that's kind of my the, thing, Brian. I think I accidentally <laughs> got taken off the distribution list, so I have no idea what's going on anymore. I mean, that's kind of my thing is to know that first. And I I feel a little upset at uh, Scott and Bob and Paul and all that stuff. Is like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the revenue stuff quicker than anyone because I know where it goes. I already got the ticket sales and the donations and stuff. Okay. I can do that. They got to love that article every year when you're doing the <laughs> scan and the Oh, tickets. Like, like I would I would get a notification of like, "Oh, Vigo put this request in. Are you okay?" And it's like, "Can you just wait as long as possible?" For no reason <laughs> other than like it's just annoying. <laughs> and, and again, again now 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 speaking retrospectively it's news i'm sorry it's news it's new yes. it's not news i want you to talk about but it is news and you know what it's news that they should care about yeah they should care about having people come to the games they should care about clearing up parking transportation issues with getting to the game on time they should care about traffic around the rink they should care about the donations they should care about prices they should try to have that building as full as they can because you know what north dakota is full they sell a lot of tickets. UMD, Minnesota State, St. Cloud, when they play Minnesota, their buildings are full. Figure out what you can to make that as easy as possible for people because losing a ticket holder is super expensive to replace. It is. They should care about that. And uh, North Dakota also gives free parking for media. Well, we used to give it to the good ones. <laughs> oh! oh! Says the guy who said, oh, you're biking to availability? Nice job. Good for you. Why are you sweaty? <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds really nice for me. I don't know that I would have said that. <laughs> Why are you so sweaty, Vigo? I, I biked here. I biked here from Northeast. I, I will so stay going to pay for parking at a game. You ride Wait. with Rob, and Rob gets parked. No, actually, I, I pay for, I pay for parking a lot, or I park by the blue door and walk, and I take my life into my own hands walking back. That's a long walk. Night. Yeah, that's a long walk. No wonder you. It's a long walk. Anyways, that's why he's always late. It takes so long for you to. <laughs> Usually, I do have youth hockey practice to coach ahead Correct. of games, or I have a family to feed. So that's my excuse. I was in North North thing. When I was in North Dakota, I was there like two hours before the game. It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is great. I can just go to the Red Pepper and I get a meal and pay for it and go to the rink. I love this. And have a Ben a Ben Blood jersey in front of Wally Shaver. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was that was funny. So good. That was so good. We had a great time in Grand Forks. That was uh, Vig's first trip to Grand Forks. Wow. But I will say that who else has been at Mariucci longer than GPL? A lot of people have come and gone. Yes, mm -hmm. Jess Myers has been there, but Jess was gone for a while. He's been there the last five or six years, but we've been there constantly since 2007. More than the local papers, yeah. Sounds like you have a complaint against the current SID. I can't help you. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> No, I mean, you got, and, and that's one thing I, you know, everybody else was congratulating you on the 250 shows. And like, I do, 
want to point out like how much work you guys do that isn't just the podcast and the website and following on the recruiting and NIL and all these things like that, that, that was a big point of contention for me of like a reason to get out. It was like all this stuff's changing and I'm kind of just already at my, at the end of my rope on load management, but I feel like you guys do a pretty good job of trying to stay on top of everything and, and growing your brand too, as you're kind of expanding. And I gave you crap about your sponsors, but it's awesome to have sponsors like that too. So it's, we it's, <laughs> we, we have a lot more viewership now and look at it. It's 1123 at night and we have 51 people watching it's us amazing. live right now. And that's what I've always, you know, as soon as we figured out how to go live, you know, we were doing uh, audio live for quite a while. We, we've, we haven't been, we have not been live since then. You know, we did that a couple of recorded shows earlier over the summer, but everything else is live. So we could see the comments and we could see, you know, like Ryan K shots fired. People commenting, we can bring this up right during the show. And I love that we do that. And, I don't think many others do. And then we'll have the 3,000 people or whatever that download the podcast mm -hmm. you know, and listen to it, you know, before the games this weekend. And that's awesome. Right. It's it's really fun. I've had you Frank Mazaka tell me he wants to be able to download the podcast one time before he had the long trip to Alaska Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> so very I need to be able trip. to listen to something on that long plane. <laughs> To put him to sleep, or or <laughs> oh, oh I don't know. Know. coming from the top is a, with the big old elbow. The, the top is a long time ago, Craig. I just said. I mean, this was uh, you know twenty minutes ago or whatever. But shots fired again. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. Thanks, Ryan K. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to talk to Lucas, uh, the only series that officially has a signed contract beyond this year is the UMD. Everything else is still in flux. Like I, I really tried to press the people who are fulfilling the request. Be like, are you sure there aren't any other contracts? I, I specified in there. I wanted all the in-state school contracts. I wanted North Dakota contracts, and I wanted Robert Morris and Colorado College and any other signed ones. So. Sometimes in these requests, you have to be very specific with what you want. Otherwise, they won't give it to you. So I tried to like identify the very specific teams. Brian's laughing because it's funny. <laughs> but you have to identify the specific teams you're referencing, the specific dates Make you're sure referencing. you delay it as long do you, as do possible. You know, do you know why some of them are home and home and then some are where, you, where they get the, the two-game uh, – Generally, the home and home is because, the, well, the teams like to have certain teams on their schedule every year so they can okay. sell tickets. That's a big draw. It's like mm -hmm. the only way to guarantee that you'll see Minnesota at Minnesota State is if you buy a season ticket. Okay. Because there's one game on there. Right. If it's a way series year, people might just be like, well, I'll just buy tickets I want to because I, you know. Yeah. So that was a big part of it. The other part of it is pairwise. Okay. Um, I don't want to have two road games this year because if we lose them, it's going to impact our pairwise significantly. If we have a home and home where we have an advantage for a home going, mm -hmm. um, those are the two big reasons I've heard when I've talked okay. to coaches off the record. I'm not going to reference right the specific conversation with the coach, but those are the things that come up in their mind okay. when they do a home and home rather than playing two road games, two home games. Because I think as a fan, you want an away weekend or a home weekend. You right. Don't of play. course. Like no. if you're a fan, you know, I know with go for puck live, there's probably fans that go to almost every game home or road. So when there's a split, they're going to both cities. Right. And that's not very fun for them. No. And you were saying and, the, the Duluth uh, gopher series where both teams got went up to Duluth, like what they got there overnight or. Yeah. Both teams went home after the game. So right. both teams got back to Duluth at like one in the morning. Right. And then they're trying to go to sleep after an intense game. Right. Like, like you're not sleeping on the bus, like you're hyped no. up. And then you get home and you're almost like hyped up again 
and then you got to go to morning film and then team meal and then pregame and then get, you know, it's a long day. Right. Like that Saturday it's, game is not well, as good as it no could be. Like that. So and Duluth will be home and home. To the Gopher schedule on GPL, you'll know when those <laughs> next two years are. Yeah. But everything else is still up in the air. I was just know that no toys here off. Yeah, that's not fun. Like Brian, you're probably writing your stuff on the bus, like trying to yeah. figure that out. That, that's not yeah, fun. and then and then you know, like you know, the the support staff, we kind of treat each other like family, and so like we we get to the ring or we get up to Duluth at God, who knows what one one in the morning, yeah. two in the morning, maybe. The the boys all go back I'll to the hotel, that. and support staff goes and sets up the locker room. jerseys. Oh man, yeah. yeah. And then you got to get you know when you go. Go to Duluth. You got to get that uh, Northern Smokehouse order in. <laughs> fills up, fills experts, up the day. <laughs> experts know the order ahead on the mobile and pick up. Because uh, you got to get your Slam and Sammy, and you got to get your uh, pate, and you got to get your bison pastrami, all ready to go to bring back home. And you know, hopefully, you have some people in Twin Cities that you communicated with ahead of time that. <laughs> aren't going to Duluth that you can share your bounty in. If anyone can't tell, Brian and I have done this over the last decade because I love it. Northern Water Smokehouse is my favorite deli in the world. Like I love everything they do and they're they're having an amazing success. They just built like a new facility in the bottom of the Dietz warehouse in Canal Park. So it's bigger. They have a deli line. They have a sandwich line. They have a like a space like for people to eat and they have like live music space now. That's awesome. Love, love it. And they have a new book out. If you want to get a holiday gift, they are not a sponsor, but they should be. <laughs> Soon enough, pull tab it will be <laughs> pull tab is gonna bring Northern Waters on. Hey, I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm pretty sure this is another Craig Floor plug, but I think the last <laughs> time we went up to Duluth, I forgot a cooler and he lent me a cooler to take our bounty home. Oh, from the rake. Yeah, well, I, something, I, something Jeff we, had or we had. Yeah, I don't remember what I think. I think it was from you, but like you know, we hopped on the bus and you gave me an empty cooler, and yeah. Vigo and I brought our our snacks home. <laughs> I didn't. See? I didn't. I didn't other, see what you brought home, but other duties as assigned. You never no, know. Other duties Craig, as you, assigned. Craig, hey, Juke, did you fall off your chair? Or what happened? <laughs> I had to pee so bad. <laughs> I had to pee. Sorry. Been drinking. Thanksgiving Eve, uh, Gopher Puck Live podcast. I will not be editing the podcast tonight. I will (laughs) post the podcast in the morning. (laughs) This is what Thanksgiving tradition is. You can edit the pod while you're watching Detroit Lions, uh, Green Bay Packers. (laughs) Whoa, hey, you can't you can't bring that reaction to the Detroit Lions right now. They are America's team. What? Oh, I am all aboard. Like Dan if the Vikings can't get it done, I am all aboard Dan Campbell. I the feel dude abides. I feel bad. I shouldn't say I feel bad for Jared Goff. Like Jared Goff's a pretty good looking, rich dude who's very athletic. But like I, I honestly I kind of would be okay with him winning the Super Bowl this year. Come on, that the would Lions be can win a Super Bowl. What? What way. have the Lions had to cheer about since Barry Sanders? I'm worried about the Lions. I, I'm, losing guessing, Dan I'm guessing to Texas A&M. By the way, what yeah. is that? I'm worried. Why would he do that? I'm because they will Detroit give him has two hundred million dollars championship. Because Texas A&M will give Dan Campbell generational money of like two hundred million dollars, and that's so hard to turn down. Can, can you? It's imagine? incredible. The the Jimbo Fisher is getting twenty five thousand dollars a day to not coach football for the rest of whatever not for, not his life but a long long time. Man, the oil money. <laughs> it's like I've not seen the Moscow extension details, but I'm guaranteeing you he's not making crazy money. Like he's doing this a little bit because he likes it. He's but paid is well. he getting big retirement money like Lucia did? Well, that's just is he setting is that, he setting himself up for that? That's just uh, uh, accounting. It's it's not a real concern. It, like he's getting paid. Like, so because like 
he's going to retire here in like five or six years, if not sooner. So, by not the way, the, the most awkward moment I ever had with the Don was with Craig Floor <laughs> when uh, the Motsko announcement happened at uh, U.S. Bank, or not U.S. Bank, uh, TCF at the time. TCF. He was going up the elevator with me and Craig talking about when he needs to get his keys for his office to Craig. (laughs) It was so fucking just. I didn't didn't ask for it. He was throwing it out there to me. Yes, he was. I didn't. Because it was you, me, and the Don going up the (laughs) elevator. And at the time, Don wasn't still very social. He's much different now, now that he's not the coach, but. Well, there's no pressure so, now. So he's so true. much more relaxed. Like Don is he so is. much more Don now than he was when he was the coach. Like so Brian, have, you met, have you seen Don since he retired? Yeah, I mean, I've I like I've bumped into him a lot and I've exchanged a couple of text messages with him. I got I'll say like uh I haven't seen much on like social of him doing media or anything. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just that I don't follow it as much. We didn't see him for St. Like, Thomas or anything like that either, yeah. did he? No, he doesn't do a lot. Was of he media. was he in town? He, he came back Neil last year for something, right? He, when did I talk to him? I talked to him for the. He was there for the Wisconsin Thursday night game. Oh, okay. That was the last time I talked to him. Wasn't he there last year? And he had he had had like shoulder surgery or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotated yeah. stuff or something. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, he was at a couple games last year, and so he's been at one so far this year, and he'll be around again. I think I last saw the Don at after the BU game in Tampa. Well, do you yeah. guys remember the the CCHA championship? The I was, I was just gonna say, Alex, Alex, Tatum. you are you are Alex, kind of our, here we go. You are a resident expert on CCHA drama, yeah. and <laughs> and Don's actually had a lot of drama in the CCHA so much. in a short it's, time. And especially that overturned goal situation. The last time I saw Don, right there. Good looking guy. He's looking like you're a friend in that photo. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but Alex, like, what's he yeah. been like as commissioner commissioner of CCAJ? Because, like, yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> we hear it as much. I've reached out to the CCHA media guy a couple times, like, hey, can Harry? I get on the Zoom meetings for Media Day? And yeah, it's been it's been this this year's this, this year's been crazy because you have uh Austin Swankler get named play a preseason player of the year, and then he and then yeah, and then go scorched earth on the program and and not only does he go in the transfer portal, but he, then he goes to a rival school at Michigan Tech. And there's all that drama now. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't imagine. And then you got the Michigan Tech uh, head coach with with all the drama that he's has right now too. Uh, I, yeah, it's that's that's tough. Wait, what what's going on at Michigan Tech? Uh, Joe Sh- Shohan, uh, um, he kicked a player off the team, and uh, one of the player, the kid that got kicked off the team, recorded a conversation between him. Uh, that you know that uh, the coach said that he was going to knock the kid's teeth out, and uh, oh, there was gosh. a you know um, a hanging comment too, and uh, uh, then uh, you know Joe told the local paper too that this kid was going to Latvia f- to play pro hockey, and he never even left the school. He's still enrolled at the school, and he went to. Uh, the Bemidji series that Tech recently had, and uh, like called him out from you know, as he was walking off off the you know off the ice, and so there's all that drama. Yeah, it's it's been, and then it's there's been crazy. A, the Swankler drama. Yeah, as uh, well. Yeah, Swankler about stealing equipment on the way out. And he then stole shoes. Yeah, he stole yeah. shoes and said that he was giving it to his brother and. Uh, and then he called out the you know the program on Twitter, but he deleted his tweets and now has gone private. Um, yeah, oh, it's, boy. it's yeah, it's <laughs> the the that series the tech plays Bowling Green in February, and that's gonna be must watch just with all the all the drama and to see if he 
actually, you know, plays. Uh, yeah, it's and because... what happens to him on the ice during that <laughs> game? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying there's a bounty on someone, <laughs> but I have to imagine that those programs are not Ooh. seeing each other, especially when you when you try to take down a, a coach like that, Ty Egner, and you know, there there was nothing. The the Bowling Green Police Department said there was no hazing, and for 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 him to say that, uh, it's it's crazy. He basically said it and admitted it was because he said it so he could transfer and not sit. Right. When Which is I don't even think he needed to do. No. Well, okay. I so, don't think he needed to do that. So no. I had I just read I hadn't heard that Michigan Tech stuff at all. Honestly, I thought you were talking about no. Lane Kiffin for a little bit there. Yeah, it's um, it's crazy oh, story. I I just read the um, us show story about Bowling Green, and I guess I I had, was aware of it, but not like of all the details of it. He was only going to get a one game suspension too, which is crazy for him to try to take down a program for missing only one game. And the one game was going to be at Robert Morris where he's yeah. Swankler's from Pittsburgh. You so, don't want to miss that one. Right. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's what made him try to bring down a program. It's, it's crazy. And now that's ruined his reputation. I mean, he over the summer uh, was uh, invited to Vegas's uh, development camp. Do you think any, any pro team will want him after what he, you know, that, you know, he's kind of just ruining his, you know, reputation for, for well, maybe pro the Black Hawks. Maybe the Blackhawks would be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then you saw, I don't know if you saw it, but like his dad was going at it with people too. And, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, it's, it's, it's not good. <laughs> I'm going for the cheap laugh there, Brian and Craig. Okay. <laughs> yes. I bit my tongue. <laughs> you you we go. both. Proactively went into your university mode and said, oh, yeah. <laughs> "Typical journalist Vigo over there, That's taking it. pot shots from the it, podcast." In in my heart, I might be laughing, but I can't laugh publicly. <laughs> but hey, um, so so the transfer thing, I was wondering about this because, like I said, I don't really stay in the loop. Now, now there's like no um restrictions. Like a coach can't say, like, "Well, you can't no. transfer within the conference, and you can't go to this school, this school, and this school," right? It's wild. Yeah. It's a free, everything's open. Yeah. It was interesting. I talked to Bob earlier this year and he's like, you know what? You know, we dipped in the transfer portal once. We might be doing it again next off season. He so needs just, to just be wary. Like, you know, I'll never forget uh, Vigo. Do you remember Cole Gutman? Uh, he was, committed to, to St. Cloud when Bob, and then when he went to Denver, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was a, uh, yeah, that was a nuclear coach speak. Nuclear coach speak is what that was. It was just like, how many bridges can we burn between a couple coaching staffs? <laughs> <laughs> how upset can we oh, be was publicly? It, was that the, the thing on the ice, right? Yeah. 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 I remember that one. Okay. I just got a text from Barb. The Craig Floor does not look enthused. <laughs> and Vigo, did you see the um, the interview Sorry, that uh, Isaac yeah. Howard just had? Um, yeah, I'm there listening. was no no mention of his NIL. You know, you know why why did you go to Michigan State? And, you know, they <laughs> they have, they gave him a boatload of money. Well, I've heard of all the schools involved in NIL. Michigan State is the most aggressive. And so I have to imagine with Isaac, I don't know anything for sure with him. I've heard it with a couple of recruits that have come into Michigan State that there's NIL money funneling their way. But I can't I can't say that that's not true. Like, right. obviously, Isaac left a great situation at Minnesota Duluth, NCHC school, usually a traditionally strong program, and just to leave after a year where was, like it wasn't easy was for like you. Because Scott's not an easy coach to play no. for, I, I imagine. And like you know what you're getting into when you sign up to play for him. Uh, Eye opening, and probably something that's going to happen in college hockey more over the next couple of years with certain players who are attracted to that. Like I know Gopher fans hear that and they go, "Why'd Cole Eiserman leave?" Different situation. Nothing to do with money. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Like that's not an issue. But it could be for Minnesota down the road. Correct. It could be better than Chipotle burritos. You got to get better than Chipotle burritos to <laughs> stick at a program. As much as all your teammates are like, Logan, can you get me one? Can you get two? Can you get three? How many? 
Oh, we gotta go to Potbelly. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> We're all gonna get food sickness in this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be yeah falling in IL for hockey. Uh, that's you know definitely gonna be you know, <laughs> interesting. Um, you know, especially you see all these decommits happening right before signing day. Um, you you gotta imagine NIL is a big part of that. Well, it sounds like BC, BU, Harvard, or other schools that are trying to get in the NIL game, and it's like those alums have lots of money. Right. They want to see, they want to see their programs do well, and you look at college hockey; it's like there's 64 teams. Mm-hmm. Much easier probably to make an impact in college hockey than it is in college football. And if you're a college hockey alum who's gone on to success, you probably want to see your program have a success. And I know Minnesota's had problems fundraising. Like, I don't know how much Craig and Brian would ever want to touch this at all, but, you know, uh, fundraising, even a locker sponsor challenge, fundraising, the rink shrink challenge, fundraising, the team room area and the, you know, all that it's hard. Like you need, uh, a sponsor that's going to be the lead and you need other people to support that. And uh, people want to see success sometimes before they put their money forward. And it's, it's hard. It's really hard. And you got to find the right people to support you that just are just like, this is for the right reason or this is for a non-personal reason. I don't know. Don't you tell me about this kid. <laughs> what? What, what? We're look at my bit. Doop is just gonna totally change the topics before we have any chance. Before we have I'm, any chance to have you respond to that, he's, he's, he's so you. hammered. I want to know about you. Faber because he's panned to Faber. He's. I was gonna say like you. the only the only thing for fundraising is like man, I wouldn't want that job. No, no not at all. Here. Well, heck no, it's not my thing. No, no. Wow, Brock Faber. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's okay. let's talk fundraising for just like another minute yeah. or two. And then move on to Brock because Brock is special. He's he's a unique kid that's come around. But fundraising for like two minutes, like what's your what's your experience and exposure to fundraising and now it's gone? Because Brian, obviously you've seen it as SID. Craig, obviously you've seen it as the ring manager. How hard is it, and and what what goes into it a little bit? It's tough. It I I I could never be the butt snorkeler these guys have to be. <laughs> to try and do that. And I prized heard me say that comment before, but Oh my God, it's so, it's so hard, you know, and, and what are you going to give to, you know, it's, it's important. And uh, everybody still thinks in athletics and Brian, you've heard me say this before and you know it, that your tax dollars, nobody's tax dollars helps us in athletics at the university of Minnesota. Zero. Nobody knows that. Your tax dollars help St. Cloud, they help Duluth, they help Mankato, but they do not help the University of Minnesota. So um, we're a non-support. So everything we do within our facilities, our team operations, everything relies on donations, TV rights, uh, ticket sales, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the fundraising is hard. So it's a tough nut to crack with a lot of those guys. And it's out there. And I don't know. You know, I'm not in those circles. I don't know what they're, you, they're close on some things and then all of a sudden something stops and you don't know why that happened and, and whatnot, but it's out there. Well, budgets keep getting slashed too for, for oh, yeah. companies and stuff to, yep. to try to donate. Oh, yeah, the, the philanthropy is tough as well from, from who we're targeting, you know, uh, as a company. Alex, I think you're right with that. It's yeah. like, you know, we're, we're looking for that guy that has that expendable cash or, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and that gets tougher too to hit the one person or the company that has something and that it's not out there, you know, and we're not that type of nonprofit where these other foundations that are out there um, want to give to that. So don't have weird. the Ralph Engelstead cash. Just to no. touch on that. I, I just think before, I think Brian wants to say something, but like <laughs> public support gets softened because they think they already contribute through tax money, which is not nope. the case in athletics, especially yeah. at an institution like Minnesota. And then the financial support from companies has gotten squeezed so much through COVID and inflation that companies have a hard time 
donating to institutions like Minnesota because some of the brands in Minnesota are not just local to Minnesota. They're, they're national brands. That's part of being in Minneapolis, St. Paul is your, your target is a national brand, Best Buy national brand. It's not like North Dakota where you have Sanford and you have uh, Engelstad where it's just like very hyper local. It's, it's additional. Sales. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a different issue. Like you look at Utah, yeah. they just did NIL for all their players where a car company leased free vehicles. Trucks. Yeah. yeah, free trucks to all their players. Nope. Like you're not gonna see that in Minneapolis. Nope. You know, there's so many people here in Minneapolis, it's it's a different perspective. And but there's Brian, so I'd be and in this community, there's so many things they can give their money to. Yeah. And there are a lot of needs out there too. I'm not oh, yeah. saying that like go for sports is a highest need on the pecking order. It's like there's so many other things you can give to. And that's nope. part of being in a big city. It's like, nope. yeah, I want to support um, youth in North and Northeast Minneapolis. I want to support um, diversity. I want to support, you know, arts. Nope. Yep. We lost you. But we just got favored. Now. <laughs> he just. <laughs> He just gave it oh, up to the guy who's the most con- the most consistent player in the history of, ho- of Gopher Hockey. In memoriam. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to make any mistakes. Jute might. Yeah, it's, well, it's Thanksgiving. I am so hammered. Joyce, what were you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, well, Brian. I want to hear your... a couple a couple of random things. One, like Craig really put that better than I ever could in terms of the the difficulties with fundraising. Um and, and I think he probably knows more about this than I do at this point too, but like, it's also hard to fundraise for some of those things. Like changing the ring size isn't flashy. It's yeah. like, how, how do you go to someone and be like, Hey, like we need you, we need your help to pay for this thing, even though it's not going to be like a super cool six thing. Inches of, six inches of concrete with a bunch of pipes. in. You know, like the, the locker room and the, the team lounge at, you know, that's also cool, but like not everybody sees that. So then it's like, yep. okay, a corporate sponsor maybe isn't interested in that. Um, and then the one thing that always kind of was uh, from from the public relations side of things was, you know, it was the uh, perfect storm of the moving to the Big Ten and oh. maybe not being quite as successful as people were thinking, even though I still maintain like, we're a pretty damn successful program, even at our roughest points. Um, and the ticket sale thing that went on of like how that negative perception. And, and we, we've all talked about this before too. The, I had someone, uh, one of my son's teachers this year said, Oh, we'd love to go to gopher games, but you can't buy tickets. Like, no, you can get tickets. That, that waiting list thing's 15 years old. That doesn't, that's so like the, that negative perception, how much that does that hurt recruiting? How much does that hurt fundraising? Like, I don't know if how much that actually does, but like from my perspective, that was something that always weighed on me was, oh my, am I hurting this program by, you know, arguably things that aren't in my control? Nope. Cause at the end of the day too, like, you know, you know what helps everything? Winning. 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 <laughs> Best marketing plan. That's probably what it, kept you there for so long, too. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, if it, you know, if the, if the team wasn't doing well, that you'd want to be showing up to the rink um, for all those years. I yeah, do and, wonder and, what the turnover is for the basketball program SID job right now, just off the top of my head. Um, what a show, right? It, yeah, it's Michelle. Really? I think they've only had three people since I've since I came back. That might okay, speak well, to Michelle. Michelle has ability. been there longer yeah. than anybody. That might speak to her ability to be duck off a of water's back no. more than any other well, person and, like and, you. And like two of them would have been working with uh, uh who, who who was before Tubby? I should know this, but I don't. Monson? No. Dan Munson? Mon- no. Dan Munson, 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 Tubby. Munson. Dan Munson. Know, Dan yeah. Munson. Who's yeah. still coaching, by the way. I, I saw that. I was like, Long Beach State. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Dan Munson cool. was awesome. I yeah. loved his vibe, you know. Gonzaga to, yeah. Gonzaga, he did great. So. All right. Are we, are, we, are we putting a bow on this? I know uh, I have to make turkey tomorrow. I have to make stuffing. I have to make mashed potatoes. 
You got a lot of stuff hammered. to do tomorrow. You I get mean, to. I get to. I get to. I personally, Brian, you know me. I'm a I'm a cook at heart. I love to control my meal because I know if I we make see it. You, we see your pizza Friday uh, post. Oh, my god! I love that you just never mix it up. No, no, no. Thing when are we going to have a pizza Friday in the summer with just us hockey guys? <laughs> it's coming. Like, I got a 9 and 11-year-old, so it's it's coming. You know, when the kids get a little older and I finally finish the basement and I have a little more space in my northeast Minneapolis house, we we'll have a night. And Brian, I can invite you too. Awesome. You guys like the color I've got going Alex, on you got to bring Pat. You got to bring yes. Pat. Yeah. For Greg, the you're always man. welcome. Nope. <laughs> so we will we will studio. do that I've soon. I've got my studio here I've been working on for months. We, we will going. do that soon. We'll, we'll try to Couch. get a, like a go for hockey availability day and then a dinner night at uh, oh. my spot northeast. Awesome. Vig's making some pizza. Making some Zop. I just... I mean, I appreciate what you're doing with your studio, but like, why isn't that a maroon or gold light? Is all I want to tell you. Oh, you saw the maroon and gold light in the locker room. No, you can't make it. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it is tough with LEDs to it make brutal. And gold. Every Wait, gold is, looks green. Every Craig, maroon looks brown. Craig, have they done any updates since I left? We haven't done anything downstairs. Nothing new. No. <laughs> There's some maroon and so, gold. So wait, do we do we still have um fake Kyle Rao in Bauer gear in yeah, front yeah. of the locker room? Yep. <laughs> hey, maybe it'll, hey, maybe it'll come back around. Who knows? <laughs> hey, well, the, that's offline. I'll talk about something <laughs> later. <laughs> I, that's, yeah, in I the, that's in the over overtime. Yes. I do Fire miss room. I do Off miss media availability just outside of the locker room. Oh, I was gonna talk about that. I hated that so much. It was music blasting with like Taylor Swift or whatever it was. Now it's it's eh. a little sterile, a little sterile for you. It Jim? is a little sterile. So it's the modern modern game that we're in. Everyone's very careful. So yeah, it's, I think uh wait, we're 44 uh, people are still on. 44, 44 Deutsch. What do you want to say? But, this but, broadcast but, has lasted <laughs> three hours and 21 minutes. It might be a record. Bob, Bob's first year, the uh, Big Ten semifinal at Notre Dame. I, I think everyone understands why it's not a good idea to have media availability outside the locker room. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, with the refs? Oh, man. <laughs> that was a tough one. I still think about that. Uh, uh, Tyler Sheehy. Penalty. Cross check or whatever. I read. Uh, he, you know what? He had a great sense of humor about that, though. Tyler does. Bob probably he doesn't. Did, <laughs> Tyler did have a great sense of humor about it. We would, I would tweet it for like the next year and a half or so, and he would retweet it every single time because <laughs> he's a great kid. He's a great kid. Three twenty one. I don't think three twenty on his record. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, Craig, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is my is my attendant my attendance record like <laughs> I personally <laughs> sold all those tickets? <laughs> I don't think anyone would be surprised or you know shocked that I take a lot of pride in that uh, Big Ten championship attendance record. Yeah. We haven't broken yet. Can they beat that now? We can. yes. You have 250 th more seats. Yeah. Because I was real worried. worried for whatever all, his, his record's 10 7. Yeah. <laughs> they almost got there, weren't they? Like, not. Yeah, we did, this, we did the second. We've done the second. Uh, the Duluth game was the second most yeah. sold tickets. I won't say attended. The most sold, sold. tickets. That's all it is. Announced it is. attendance. Ego is right. fake news. Okay, okay. No, but. <laughs> No, Brian, I always say yeah. actual scanned attendance oh. records. It, when I put my articles out, I say this is the most number of people who actually showed up to a game. But what does that matter? Because it means how enthusiastic people are for the game. It, it absolutely matters. Yeah. I just don't like it. <laughs> it was a pretty good turnaround, Vigs. That Duluth game was that the redemption was pretty good that night. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the that Big might Ten be a championship. When Big I Ten do championship my foil. two years ago, 
five student sections. Yep. What was that? What was that? What yeah. are you doing? I what thought the... you were do. I thought you did that on purpose. I was like, that's <laughs> no, so I, I totally thought that was on purpose. That was crazy. I... Like 250 episodes, I'm throwing off the balloons. I, I, mean, <laughs> no. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> it's a new gesture. We haven't figured out thing. yet. The, have to the clip that. But I will say, yeah, the, the Big Ten Championship two years ago, they had five sections of student. It was throwing beer cans. Great. Yeah, that it that's was amazing. Game, that's the, the game student, we're talking about. I here. was in the section 10, one section over as my one game as a fan that year. And the students were looking for a place to sit because it was oversold, even with five sections. Five sections. The one the one thing I will pat myself on the back for, I actually sold a suite to an alum. <laughs> <laughs> to which one? Uh, uh I don't want to I don't want to say but they they were reaching out trying to find tickets and that was the, oh, yeah, that's right. that was the game where it was like hey you might as well just buy a suite it's the exact Sweet, yeah, same cuz it wasn't it wasn't much more for that one yeah. they've changed that now Brian <laughs> Yeah a little but, more to get up there now for those big 10 games Yeah but how many more alums are at games now all the time wow. I love it It's, it's awesome yeah, it's, it's fun it's to walk fun to in see. the club room and see everybody and right. talk with them and they come up and chat I love it any alums who watch this show and are part of the 42, say hi to me. I'd love to chat. So. <laughs> Mike Carmen's at every game, guys. Mike Carmen's Carmen always Carmen there. Carmen quite often. And you know what? You know what, though? To his credit, he's been riding. He rode through all of it, too. Right. Like he, well, he didn't he go, did. oh, hey, they're winning. They're winning again. Now I'll come. He was here all the time. Right. Yeah. Well, that's fun to see. Like, I mean, I've been watching this program since I was like, six when i was in old marucci watching pat mcclady go for all those breakaways and <laughs> oh, sit in the penalty awesome, box man. i was right behind the visitor penalty box in the old marriage awesome and like that was part of my introduction to go for hockey and you know it's fun to have you on alex and yeah. it was fun to have pat on and yeah, i mean craig and brian it's great to have you with uh it's been a fun ride it wouldn't be enjoyable if the people around it weren't helpful and fun like I definitely wouldn't have lasted. This is not my it's all business. Like my my day job is at the U and IT. Like I like journalism. I like doing this podcast. I like writing for Gopher Puck Live. Sometimes I have to do different stuff, like family and coaching and all that stuff that I do. But yeah, exactly. I love but it's something to look forward to outside of your regular job too. I mean, yes, yeah, I, I love this. So, and like what I tell people because like you know I've been gone for a year and a half now, and it's still something that like it's fun because people care about it. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, every, I, it would drive me insane at times where my neighbors would want to talk to me about stuff. And it's like, Hey, can we talk about anything that isn't work? But it also was really nice that like people care. Not everybody gets to go to work and have stuff that other people care about. So. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Alex. For yeah, thank you for letting me be on for overtime, an epic, epic overtime. I am hammered. It is midnight. We have made it to Thursday. I'm slurring like a son of a bitch. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy ben, Thanksgiving. find Craig Floor, the Craig Floor. He will sign it. Capital T H E. <laughs> and a oh, big Hapke is here every week. Happy Turkey Day. Can't say much more than that. Thank you, folks, for joining our live broadcast. Long overtime, 250th episode of GPL. Thank you very much. Bye. See you.